Hello, 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 welcome, 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 I don't know what that was, a bit of a vibrato there I didn't plan on, Yay. welcome one and all, welcome, welcome, it is Tuesday, I guess, it's, it's, it's Millennium Falcon, that doesn't really, it's not alliterative is it, Millennium Falcon M Tuesday, it's Falcon for Tuesday, it's, hi everyone, it's Foxy, <laughs> Hello, it's Fox from E-Models here, emodels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model-making needs. I'm in a silly mood today, can you tell? I'm in a, I'm in a silly, childlike mood, so expect nonsense today. Yes, welcome. I'm doing another live stream on the Millennium Falcon, the perfect grade Bandai Millennium Falcon that I'm building for emodels.co.uk, this very channel. Uh, and... What I'm doing is I am getting all the building, or most, a big chunk of the building done in advance before I do any of the painting. Because when I do falcons, I like to do most of the building first and then get them painted. And then, you know, it just makes life easier. Uh, now, I have built many falcons in the past. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute, actually. Let me just very quickly uh, have a look at chat and then everything and see who's in. And this is going to be, I don't know, two hours, three hours. See how long it goes for. It's not particularly hot today, so I'm not sweating like... Uh, nonsense in this in this uh, in this room so we see how long we can go on for uh, i'm going to be working on this and get little bits done first of all of course this is an e-models uh, show on the e-models youtube channel uh, make sure please if you are in the chat there is no swearage uh, please do not promote other traders because it's an emodels.co.uk stream uh, and be nice and uh, be nice and civilized mods are in the chat they're lovely and fluffy they'll keep you safe they'll police the chat but if you cross them they'll catapult you into space into the heart of the sun whilst you're already on fire anyway they'll, they'll put you on fire first before you go into the heart of the sun so don't cross the mods 
Uh, yeah, we're going for a few hours. <clears throat> I'm just going to crack on with the build and get things done. Use this, use the sort of standard uh, format if you want of an, of an AMA. So ask me any questions you want. Ask me anything about model making, about Falcon, about me, about space, about dinosaurs, about isopods, anything you want. Ask me any question you want. I'll answer most of them. No religion and politics there, please. Uh, but like I said, this is an eModels stream. Uh, this is, I am filming this build for eModels. It is the perfect Great Millennium Falcon. But I'm not actually filming this part because the build part is not interesting to film. It's a uh, push fit kit, which means all the bits, there's no glue required. All the bits just go together. However, I am gluing it because it needs to be transported to e-models and live in their display cabinet. And if I just build it as a push fit kit, incredible though it is, it guarantees at some point they'll move it around in their cabinet and something will fall off and they'll panic and get really scared because they won't know what to do. So I'm gluing it anyway, just for safety and security. You don't need to do this. Um... But yes, so we're going to crack on. I'll have a quick look at who is in chat. Uh, let's have a look and see. Uh, Brian Wimble was the first person in. He said, yeah, as I was setting up the chat. That was about five hours ago. Uh, Dad or Scaly Models is in one of your mods. Uh, Sprue and Glue is in. Welcome, Sprue and Glue. We have Andy McLeish, Phil Lewis. Uh, do, 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 do. Brian Wimble, who's back. He, came, he went out and came back in again. Uh, model Making Mayhem. Uh, the Raging Modeler. Uh, we have... Who else have we got coming in? Anyone else? Uh, Cy Reynolds is in. Kevin Reynolds. Welcome, Kevin. Your Lord and Saviour, Kevin. Uh, we have... That's uh, Dave Dim is in. Star Wars modeler. Hello, all. And then does a salute. And Candy Graham for Mongo. Uh, Candy Graham has already answered... Oh, Graham M's in. Welcome, Graham. Uh, Candy Graham has already answered Dad's question, even though Dad hasn't asked it yet. Even, oh, no, he's done it. I take it back. He's asked it already. Dad asked the important question. What's on your bench and what's in your belly? What, what are you working on right now? doesn't have to be a model it could be uh you know it could be a drawing or you could be putting up shelves or you could be installing a shower unit or just anything creative and crafty and what's in your belly what are you having for your dinner or what are you going to have for your dinner i don't know what we're having tonight it might be kfc Ooh, i don't know uh that's everyone in chat uh do 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 now i'm going to be working on this quite industriously because i need to get this built so i can crack on with the painting <laughs> I'm filming the painting properly. There'll be proper videoed episodes of the painting process. <clears throat> but the reason I'm not filming this part and just doing live streams is because it's a batrillion tiny parts assembling all the greebles and stuff. Because it's a push fit kit, it's a Bandai kit, it goes together perfectly. 99.9999% perfectly. If you've never made a push fit, or what? If your experience of push fit and snap fit kits is Revell. Uh, and some other ones and you think that's makes them and that's you know push fit kits are terrible and you've never built a bandai forget everything you know about push fit kits forget revenue forget all that if you've never made a bandai at some point you need to treat yourself to a bandai kit be it a, a one of these perfect gray falcons be it a regular star wars kit be it a gumpler anything just treat yourself to a bandai kit but because it's a push fit and there's no gluing actually required or almost none um the building part is not very interesting to film it's tedious to film because it's days and days and days of assembly. And I'm just saying, here, I'm putting this bit into this piece. And now I'll attach this bit. And now we'll attach this. It's not interesting to film. Uh, and it's a long process. So I figured it's easier just to stream it. Because then if we can talk about it while I'm doing it. And then when we've got everything built, I can crack on with the filming. And that's where I can focus my filming. Because I don't need to teach you how to put component A into a hole there. It's... The instructions are perfect. The instructions are beautiful. You, you don't need help with the building, but I will be showing you how to paint it. Uh, so, yes, we're going to crack on. So far in this project, I have assembled loosely uh, the, fal the, the Falcon. <laughs> yeah, I've done the whole thing now. I've assembled loosely the cockpit. Uh, it's not fully fixed together. It's not glued together. I will, of course, take it all apart again because I'll need to paint the interior and the cockpit. What I'll be doing is painting the cockpit interior first and some other bits and bobs and then assembling everything with the cockpit messed off, and then we'll paint the whole hull. So that's loosely assembled for now. Uh, there's some photo etch to go on there. That's just all in place, all the parts. Uh, I finished, uh, I assembled one mandible last week on the stream, or just about finished it, and I've gone ahead and done the other mandible. I figured you didn't want me to stream another mandible. Now we've done one. They're all kind of very similar. So we've got both the mandibles done, and if you can see there, some of the greebles on that is just, it's just fantastic. I will take some photographs once all the assembly is done and before we do the painting. I will take some close-up pictures if I can, as best you can on my iPhone, uh, to show you some of these greebles. And as we've been going along, I have been pointing out greebles to you, like that's a bit of a tank turret. There's a bit of a, there's underside of a truck with an engine block. It's a bit of the chassis. 
Um, there's some tank track, probably originally 170 second scale tank track on the real studio model. Uh, there's a Porsche 911 engine. It could be a Porsche Carrera. There's the, you know, there's the, the actual floor part from the Airfix, vintage Airfix pontoon bridge set. There's an entire truck chassis with a Browning 50 cal in the middle. We've been pointing things out, and it's fun doing that. And I don't know all the parts, I don't know everything, but as I've been going along, if I see something I recognise, I may not know the specific kit, but I'll recognise what it is. I'll point it out to you as we go along. So we've got both mandibles done. We've got the cockpit and tubengefahrten. Cockpit and tubengefahrten. Now this does come apart like that, uh, which we'll need to do once to get the cockpit out to paint it, and then I'll put the wiring in and stuff like that. But for now, it is just loosely assembled together. So I'm going to put these off to one side, because I don't want to get them damaged. One moment, please. Stand by. A do do do, putting them in the place. Do -do 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 -do. Now, normally with the build, I tend to have like the model box off to one side, and then I can keep things in it. But this is quite tricky because it's so big, and the box isn't a top opening box; it's a side opening box. So I've had to cut the box around it. Yeah, it's a bit of a challenge, but it's working. Uh, so what we're going to do? Well, today we have done the mandibles. Mandibles done. The next step is the. Uh, We've got some of the hull parts. Uh, we've got the interior of the lower hull. Pretty much all of it, I think, most of it. Although we're not going to put the wiring in yet. The interior of the, of the lower hull. Uh, we have all the side walls and the um, escape hatch ports. I think that's what those are, if I remember rightly, to do. And uh, then we've got the maintenance bays and things like that. So we've got, we're starting on the exterior of the hull now. Now I have gone ahead. Uh, and done a little bit of work off camera. Like I said, I did finish the uh, the mandible off. I have painted, or rather primed, these parts in advance. Now, these are uh, the parts for the interior of the engine grill at the back. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to assemble that and, and get it in there and get it all painted. And we've been trying to figure out, I'm used to building fine molds Millennium Falcons and they have a particular way of doing them. I have a particular way of building there is that I know off the off, off, you know, top of my head, I can just, I, I could build one and do it. The Bandai one is a, a mystery to me because I don't know the full build process. I've never built one before, this perfect grade. So I don't know. All I can do is look ahead in the instructions and try and plan my paint process. Uh, and as best I can find, as best I can think, I can get most of this assembled. What we're going to have is the cockpit tube, uh, I think I can get the upper and lower holes stuck together and everything assembled with the mandibles in place. I've got the whole ship to paint. Uh, engine grills installed and everything else. Get it all painted. I'll probably have the upper hull actually separate because then I can put all the lighting in and then put the top on. But we'll get them painted. But while I was trying to figure out how to paint the engines, what I've decided to do is I've primed the uh, the in interior engine grills or the interior like nozzles, thruster nozzles, in black. Uh, these were just quickly sprayed with the UMP Ultimate Primer. I didn't film it because there's no point. I'll be showing. I'll, I'll be showing proper priming and painting later on when we do the painting. There's no point me showing recording that, and I can't do it on the live stream because it's too noisy and the, air, the spray booth is too much to set up with a live stream camera. So we've got those primed. I'm going to leave them primed. What I intend to do, and I'll show you in a minute, is have these primed ready so that when they're installed and the grills over the top and I can paint them. Um, they've got a layer of primer, and if they don't get caught with other primer or paint, because they're quite they're like tubes. It may be that when they're in place and in situ and I, pray, I prime the rest of the ship and paint them, they may not catch on every surface the primer. I had to work my way around to get the primer in there. So if that does happen, it's not the end of the world because if paint doesn't get in there, it'll still be black. And that's fine. It just looks like an interior of a nozzle. So I thought I'll prime those black first just so we've got some cover there. Uh, so I've, I've gone ahead and I have installed uh, this part here which is, I don't, you can't really see it, but it's actually inside the ramp. It's the interior corridor. Now, I'm going to be doing this in flight, so you're not going to see in there anyway. So I've just stuck that in. I'm not glued it in, but I've just put it in. That's not going to get painted, really, because, like I said, the, the ramp's going to be covered up. I'm not building it with the gear down. I'm building it gear up flight, so you're not going to see inside. Uh, and I've attached this little piece here, which is the interior detail. For where the hole is and if you can't see it now and i've glued it in place but it's actually another i think it's a jeep a willy's jeep chassis with engine block and drive shaft and everything i think it's a willy's jeep chassis i don't know if it is that on the real thing on the real filming miniature it might be little bits of greebles but on this they've just molded in you know a, 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 what looks like a willy's jeep chassis so there we go begin to get a size for this now aren't you there's my hand hand of grabbing thing 
<sighs> yes. Challenge to film when it's a live stream. Not so bad when it's a, an actual, you know, film thing. Um, but yes, so I'm, I'm still in the planning stages of exactly how I'm going to assemble it and what sub assemblies I'm going to have. But I'm thinking cockpit tube, lower hull, upper hull, back plate, paint it. <clears throat> With all the greebles on. I've got to be careful when I assemble bits though, not to break greebles while I'm... Because the, the instructions do show you, um, basically, attaching the upper and lower hulls uh somewhere yeah it does show you get all the lower hull interior done get all the wiring loom through and then put the the upper hull part on with the cockpit tube and then you start applying like greebles and stuff on the surface of the hull now i'm not going to put anything like the the, re the rec 10 dish on there but for things like the the, the greebles i'm probably going to attach them first and then paint everything the problem i've got is when it comes to painting this i'm mixing a custom paint uh, a custom paint colour. I'm not using it fresh from the pot paint. So I need to have all the things painted and ready to go. Because if I mix a custom colour and then I paint individual components and little bits and bobs, which is, I mean, I don't want a billion different things on sticks. I want to have as little paint as possible. So if I've got cockpit tube, upper and lower hull uh, and the back plate, and that's it, and a couple of other bits like the Rectenna dish, that's fine. I can get more painted and primed and pre-shaded and everything else done and then we can assemble it all and do the weathering. If I've got a thousand things on sticks and I'm mixing this custom paint and I start painting bits and bobs and then we get it all together and then it takes me days to paint everything and then I get it together and I realise that I've missed a bit here or this bit needs repainting because it's come off now. I've attached it in place and it's scraped. So I've got, I need to be able to glue stuff together. The risk is then at that point, if I need to go back in and touch things, I may have used all my paint or it may be two weeks old and not usable anymore. It might have just separated out and it won't be exactly the same. So I'd rather get all the painting done as quickly as possible in one go, which is get big chunks. But so I'm going to try and get all the greebles on. The greebles will be glued in place, like I say, because it's going to e models and being shipped and handled. So it's not a big problem if I'm trying to manhandle the whole ship to paint it while all the greebles are on. I've, I've done that before, so it's not a big problem. Anyway, so I've done that step. It's been done. So today we are engine block interior, and then we've got the uh, two maintenance access hatches, whatever you want to call them. I don't really know what they're called. I like I've heard them seen. I've heard them called uh, maintenance pits or access pits uh, that go underneath in the seamy underbelly. Uh, and I don't know how far we'll get. We'll see if we can get at least that far today. Now, I'll have a quick swig of my coffee. I do, of course, have my enormous coffee of happiness. One proper grown-up litre of pure coffee goodness. Uh, quick look at the chat, because we asked Bench and Belly. Uh, Candyman from Mongo says, Belly coffee because it's morning. Yes. Uh, Brian Windmill says, Cheese and onion wrap on Bench. Wait, cheese and onion wrap. Oh, wrap with, I've, I've just, I've, yeah. Cheese and onion wrap on bench, uh, remote controlled. Sh hang on. Use your commas, folks. Use your commas and punctuation. Cheese and onion wrap, comma, on bench, a remote controlled Sherman tank. At what scale? Is it the big 1 16th one that's like, oh, that's awesome. Or is it like a 1 35th Tammy or something? Tell me. Uh, Raging Modeler says, belly, nothing. Bench, Judge Dread, minis, minis, and boo, and hang on. Here we go again. Belly, nothing. Bench, Judge Dread Minis. Minis and Boo and a Mark II Viper. Okay, I think I've got that. It's too early in the morning for everybody, isn't it? Uh, Gaz Vickers is in. Welcome, Gaz. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Graham M says, pork pie in the belly. Scaly on the bench. Brand new compressor and airbrush. Cool. Uh, in Thompson's in, hi all. Philip Buck is in, afternoon all. And Philip also says, belly chili with spicy Mexican rice and a bucket load of beer. Yes, it, I'm guessing it's afternoon where you are. <laughs> Bench, Edward, 148 Limited Edition, Lysander. Ian Thompson, belly now, bench now, waiting on paint. I know that wrist. It's Foxy, says Arthur. Yes. So, yes, so we're carrying on with the Falcon. That's all the bench and belly questions so far. I can't see how many of you are watching because I don't have that. I forgot to set it up on this thing. It's normally above the chat. If you are watching this, though, um, do come and join in the live chat. There's two reasons I'm doing these streams. One is because it keeps me company when I'm doing this tedious building bit, because I'm a painter, not a builder. Uh, and also to it's so I can show you the build without having to film it. And also, it's for you guys to hang out with your mates in chat. So, 
if you're watching this, uh, if you if you can see the chat, I mean, you can see the chat here, but if you can see the actual live chat on the YouTube page, then do join in. Don't lurk. Do join in. Everybody's really friendly. The mods will keep you safe, but there's never any trouble in chat anyway. So do stay, uh, do get in chat and come and say hello. If you're watching this and you can't see the chat, if you're on a mobile device, try scrolling down below the video. It might be underneath. Uh, or if you're on a mobile device and you're using Chrome as your browser, uh, click on the little three buttons, the three dots in the corner, and, and choose Request Desktop Site on the menu options. You may be watching the, the mobile version, which doesn't always have the live chat. But do come and join the chat. Do come and join the chat. Uh, Brown Windmill, 116th Tamiya, been done static. Awesome. 35 watching, 11 likes. Cool, thank you very much for everybody watching. Right, so we're going to crack on. Uh, I've, got to say, I've got the interior engine nozzles taken out, so I need to get the actual engine grill cover which is sprue z which i totally didn't get out of the box oh hang on a minute hang on a minute <sighs> box and spoon spoon tacular do, 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 do. those two i think i might need more but that's those two for the moment hang on i'm having box issues here thanks obama <sighs> Hang on a minute. Okay. Are they both on Z? Uh, oh, I need O as well. Hang on, hang on. L, M, N, O. I need O for one piece. Charge, you know. I don't know. Yeah, it's a smile. Look, it's like a, it's like a smiley face. Hello. Right, so I'll get this piece off the O sprue. Uh, first and foremost, just because I can put this sprue back in the box. What I tend to do is before I do a few steps, I tend to mark off in the instructions which sprues I'll need. I keep all the sprues in the box that I've opened up in alphabetical order, so this can go back in. Uh, L, M, N, O, O. There we go. That's gone back in the box. Just so I don't have like 100 sprues on the desk, because that just gets messy. I don't have a sprue rack, so. Uh, now what I am going to do, so this is O. Just on the off chance that at some point I need to discombobulate the engine parts, I might not need to, but just in case I do, what I've been doing, especially on these, is I've been marking on the back. I was going to prime this. I marked on the back which one they were. So I've got Z502, uh, Z5, just so I know when it comes to putting them together. I don't want to suddenly find I'm, I'm trying to remember which one's which. So for this one, this was 03. Now you're not going to see those two edges, so I can put it there. Not really writing on that very well. Uh, oh, three, just in case. It just means I can easily, I don't have to suddenly go, hang on, is this one go with that? Because these go with specific ones, so I'm like, I'm not going, does that one go with that one? No, we we'll go with that now. I can just quickly do it then. And we also have uh, Z7 times two and Z6 times two. So there's six and seven. I will clean these up in a second. So that's six. So that is six. That's seven. Do 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 do. Now I know you can't see him, but just off camera, Guthorm. Hello, Guthorm. Hello. He is uh, watching the chat for you. He's, he's monitoring the chat. He's policing it for you. That's seven. Then we've got the other sprue, which is oh six. I've got the iPad in front of me here. If you are watching this, um, yeah, we'll do it as the usual kind of e-model style, ask me anything thing. So ask me any questions. If you're in chat and you want to get my attention, I do have it in front of me, but I will be spending a lot of time looking at tiny parts and cleaning them up. So uh, if you want to get my attention in chat, as always, make sure to put your comment in capital letters, put all the, all the capital letters. Uh, or... If you want to, you can do a super chat, which is the dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. And that just puts a colour box up and I can't possibly miss your comment then. But if you want to, just capsify it. I'll go and put O sprue back. I don't think I need O again now, so I'm going to put it back. I probably regret this because I have Z sprue on me. I might, re I might need it. I don't know. How can we possibly find out? I'm quite surprised I don't need the Y sprue. This is a bit concerning. Although I don't think we've got that far ahead yet. Uh... Do I not need the Y sprue yet? No, we're not doing this. Oh, that's later on. Okay, cool. I don't know if we'll get that far yet. Right, so these were 
six and those were seven. So I shall mark these. Mark it. I'm not doing it on the inside because it might end up visible. So I'll just do it on the top here where you're never going to see. 06. 06. 07. 07. I don't know why the paint... These are acrylic paint pens. I don't know why the paint's going fine on these ones, but on these ones it's a bit mingy. I don't know why. It's weird. Right, so that's that bit. So I'm just marking those just so I know which is which when it comes to the sun. I'm going to leave them for a minute for that for that paint to dry. Uh, and then we'll, we'll do a bit of clean up. On these, not a lot of clean up needed because uh, all the nubs were in fact on the attachment peg. So all I need to do is just give them a quick zizz with the file just to just to smooth off so they fit in properly. But like I say, the reason I primed them black first was just purely so that I can't see. Hang on. Put my space helmet on. Just purely so that when it comes to spraying these later on when they're in situ, if the paint doesn't catch on every single surface, at least then I've just got some black on there and it just looks like a shade effect where it looks like it's been like pre-shaded. It's always a handy trick when you're doing interiors of things. If it's something that's not really going to be seen, but you don't want it to look like it's unpainted. And you're not necessarily going to paint it otherwise. Or it may have bits, that, you know, basically something that you're not going to be able to access once it's installed, but you don't want to not be able to paint it. Just do a, a black primer coat. And then most of it will get covered by the paint. Anything that doesn't just looks like a shaded area because it's an interior recess. So it's going to be dark anyway. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, AMA from Model Making Mayhem. How many episodes will this be, Fox? In total, there will be six episodes of this build. How many episodes there'll be? I don't know. But in total, the last one will be numbered six. You'll see. Uh, so we've got these done. I'll see if I can quickly just get rid of these nubs. Now these are you're not going to see this side. It's not not a cosmetic cleanup this is purely um so it doesn't get stuck or, or uh, you know fouled anywhere so it fits properly so i'm not bothered about sanding these once they're done because none of this will be visible all you're going to see is that edge basically so i really care if there's a little bit of a knob i just want to make sure there's i mean a visible you know scratch mark or something i just want to make sure there's no actual physical nubulation nubulation so we're going to try and keep as ow hang on was that stability <gasps> it was a little bit are we going to get are we going to get the fluids of life we'll find out in a minute i got a little bit of a prod with the blade there i don't think i've got i don't think i've got exploding bleedingness oh, no blood sorry disappointments i know the clippers on that i think it's a bit big it's a very new sharp blade, so it probably went in and out again and just did so much minimal damage that I'm not even bleeding yet. Nothing, look at that, nothing. No wound. It's a little bit stingy. Never mind. Do -do. Where would it be without stability? There you go, you've had your stability, Phil. I was in FIWL, not the name Phil. I've got a little number there. Now I'm going to get rid of this one a bit carefully because this is a, a joint. I need to make sure that's flush. Oh, it's very flash. Anything on the ends? Trying to remember where the nubs actually were on these parts now. That one there. Oops. No, oh, fiddly hands today. So I hope you're all well. How is everyone? How are you all doing? Where is everyone today? Where are you all from? Or where are you all watching from? Of course, as always, I'm in Cheshire. Sunny, sunny, middle class suburbia Cheshire. Yes. All lies. Where are you all from? Oops. A bit cleaned. Uh, what's been going on in your part of the world? I hope you all had a good weekend. And I hope you all watched the show yesterday. It was a good laugh yesterday. It's a good sign. You know you've got. You've cleaned up, you've nipped a piece off a sprue nicely where you can't tell where the heck the nub was. Well, can't find it, it's not there. 
Uh, I will check in with the chat from time to time, just not as often as normal. Uh, and do let me know in chat if the audio and video are okay. And also do let me know if I'm constantly getting my head in shot all the time. Because I don't necessarily know. Oh, the number's on that, on that bit. I don't know if my head's in shot because I can't see the, the stream. So it's on that little bit there. There we go. Forgot that bit. Takes it off the sprue within minutes. Forgets where it was. It's starting to get warm in here. I said, I've got my winter. Uh, do you know? I got everything ready and I thought, it's kind of cool outside. It's not hot. I think I can afford to have the window open. I like to keep the window open if I can with the curtains open and stuff. Because that means that the PC can vent the warm air out and it goes right out the window. Keeps the room cool and also keeps the PC cool. Otherwise my fan screams constantly. And strangely my fan is not screaming at me. Um, so I keep the window open as much as I can. But... The only problem is if it suddenly warms up, then this, no blood, this room does get like an oven because the sun shines into the window. So when I got everything set up, I thought, well, it's kind of cloudy outside. It's probably going to rain. It's not that warm. I'll be fine. Get the window open. It's been dead nice. Now it's warming up. And if it starts going sunny, I might be crucified. <laughs> this stream might suddenly end in about an hour after I just die of dehydration. Right. So a uh, quick look at chat. Yes, Brian Winmore's doing his, uh, his uh, Tamiya uh, tank in static. Awesome. Yes, because you can buy them with or without the remote control kits, can't you? Uh, do, do, do. Candy Graham asks Cy Reynolds, I hope you'll post photos of your 1144th Falcon after you've painted it. Yeah, because Cy Reynolds is doing the 1144th version. If you want a really nice Falcon, uh, I've said this before, there are various Falcons you can get. There's all the Ravel and AMT and Ertl Falcons. They're all garbage. But if you just want a fun time painting, they're dirt cheap. And they're, they're not accurate or anything like that. And they're not exactly brilliant. But they're fun to paint. That's the main thing. It's just a fun painting thing. There's the Fine Moulds 172nd scale Falcon, which is long out of print apart from it's now sold as the Revell Master Series Falcon. That is the original Fine Moulds Falcon. And that was, for many years, the most accurate Millennium Falcon you can get. Uh, but that's... Fine Moulds no longer have the license, but they create... They, they print it now under license to Revell. So the Revell Master Series is a very good Millennium Falcon. But it's about the same price as this. The perfect grey one. So if your budget is... You know, you can't stretch to this. Don't panic. There's plenty out there. Um, I would say, if you just want some fun painting... If you want an accurate falcon, you want to do yourself a favour and save up for this because it's awesome. But if you're not that fussed um, and you want just a fun time painting, any of the falcons would be great. Some of the, even like the Revell 20 quid one that's just a simple push fit. It's, it's, it's about as accurate as my butt is, you know, but it's fun to paint. The thing with the falcon is the falcon is it's all about painting the falcon and weathering because it's, it's a junk, hunk of junk. Uh, and I forgot what the point I was going to make was now anyway. So, yes. But yes, if, you, if, you, if you're struggling for that... But you want a really nice, accurate one. The 144th scale one is your best bet. Because that's... It's not as accurate as this, obviously. The Bandai 144th. But it's beautifully done. It's super accurate. It's nice and detailed. There's millions of parts even for that. And it's great fun. So, yeah. If, you, if your budget wants to stretch to this one, get the 144th scale one. It's brilliant. All good Falcon painting fun. Um, I can't find the like button on my phone app. Uh, that's because you're on the app and it's rubbish. If you can, use a, if you're on a mobile phone or iPad or tablet, try and use browse using actual browser, then you get all the desktop options as well. Uh, the mobile apps for YouTube are just garbage. It's just advertising everybody else's streams. I never use it because I can't find anything. I've got it, says Scaly Models. Uh, no pants bench time, obviously, says Paul at Teamonet. Welcome, Paul, another one of your mods. Uh, Beckstorm says the life force remains in its container. The prisoner will ev evacuate the human residence, or the human residence will be incinerated. There's a there's a there's a sci-fi thing for you. Name that name that series. The prisoner will leave. Will, the prisoner will vacate the human residence, or the human residence will be incinerated. I didn't mean that to sound like Carl Sagan a bit, but never mind. I totally agree with your assessment regarding that blade handle model making guru equals fox screw and glue. Uh, that blade handle. What? That this? That it's awesome. That it's the best thing in the world because it is. Uh, fumbly hands today folks careful dropping them god hands i know it's because i've not had enough coffee uh, reggie modeler will be soon be popping to northwich he's in cheshire and that means he's going to uh a n other retailer which we won't discuss 
Even the handle of reduced stabbiness has its off days. Yeah, well, I mean, this means I'm not going to drop it on my leg when I'm not using it, but I can still go stab like that, and yeah, it doesn't get rid of that specialness. Uh, Osric is in. Your audio video is fine, folks. You're even in frame. <gasps> I must sort that out. Sorry about that. Uh, Osric is in. Welcome, Osric. I'm at home working lunchtime now. Team Inep says, avec les mosquitoes. Don't know why he's talking French. I broke my Citadel nipper, says Bextor. I picked them up from one arm and heard a click. The spring inside has slipped out of place and there's no way to fix it. Uh, I'm not going to investigate and do exactly the same thing, but yeah. You... They probably are fixable, but it's not like it's a screw. It's a it's a cut off rivet, isn't it? So yeah, you might just need to get some more nippers. Uh... Graham is saying there's a nice breeze. Les, must, uh, les moustiques sont absents. Also, yes, Graham uses the correct French word for mosquitoes, moustique, not les mosquitoes, which is franglish. Uh, si Reynolds says, oh no. I'll paraphrase. He says, the bonus is to, to back about the nippers. You get to buy more tools. E models stock tons of options. I recommend Tamiya or Zuron. Yes, Zuron are really nice. If you want fine control, Zuron are really, really nice. The Tamiya ones are great. They're just a bit, they're a bit hardcore for bigger parts. If you want real fine ones, go for the, uh, the Zuron. Uh, people are talking in chat now. I can't read that one. Uh, the, the one about Paul at Team Annette wrote because it's the swears. I can speak French, so yeah. Uh, it's true, Beckstorm. Who in this chat does not like buying new tools? Find me one and I'll eat my hat. I love buying new tools. Well, I, love, I love having... I don't like giving the money to people to have it, but I like having new tools. Oh, Merging Modeler says, not to another retailer, but to meet a lady. Ooh, so you're not going to the place we won't discuss. Okay, so you're going to meet a lady person. A lady of the opposite sex. A little a little tryst. A little liaison. Mm, very nice. Uh... I also ordered the retractable blade on your advice. Yep, I'm, I've, I've used it now for a few days and it is lovely. It's lovely. Thank you very much for sending me that. It's lovely. Uh, do, 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 do. C'est vrai? Says, why are we talking in French? I don't know. Anyway, let's crack on. Just nonsense. So we've got O3. I do recommend when you're building something like a bandai kit i mean it works to any kit but when you're building something like a bandai kit where you can especially gumpler where you can um go in advance and if it's a push fit kit go in advance and get all the bits off the sprue and then assemble them if it's something like a gumpler where you've got a billion parts get a, a little tidy tray with little sections so you can put them into different bits if it's something like this where you're doing steps at a time you're taking all the bits off because there are lots of similar steps i do recommend you write on each one which is just so you can then go right i need oh three that's that one i need oh two which is that one done and it needs to go this way is it? there you go done bye thanks for coming in see you all next week yes yeah, so the reason i'm doing this you can see there now that piece in there which you can't see because i've got the black thing on it that piece in there it'll probably get covered by most of the paint but just in case, if there's some edges and corners that the paint doesn't hit when I do paint it eventually, at least it'll be black and dark so that it'll just look like shading or dirt. Because it's an, it's an exhaust nozzle, so it could be just, you could interpret it as dirt. Not you, Lee, to see that anyway, but. Uh, right. That's one. Uh, we need, uh, then we need uh, Z5 and Z7. I don't know why. And this is heresy, I know. Wait, Z7? Did I write 07 on this? It's Z7, like a spoon. Um, Z5 and Z7, which is that one. That bit there. Do it on camera, dear. That bit there. I'm up here, aren't I? I don't know why. Z5 and Z7. So it says on here, on the instructions, it's pointing out. It's using the little bunny ears. It's saying here, bunny ears, bunny ears. So big nub, big nub, little nub. And it's saying bunny ears, little sticky up thing. Always remember, the bunny ears on Bandai kits mean, stop, look at that. Pay attention, don't screw it up. So big, big, little, little cowling piece there. That's how you know. They, they do really, really do. This isn't the right piece, is it? Uh, hmm, this may not be the right. Uh, wait. 
Z, I want Z5. Which one have I got there? Z5. There we go. Yes, that does fit. I was, I was looking at it in a weird way. Uh, that little tiny tab doesn't go in that bit. It just goes in this little bit here. There you go. Uh, what was talking about? I've forgotten already. I've already forgotten. Uh, we want Z7 and Z4. Oh, yes. Um, I know it's heretical, but you can tell somebody who watches a lot of YouTube content because I feel wrong saying Z. I'm British and I feel compelled to say Z because I watch, you know, American YouTube channels and American TV and stuff. It's like, I, I don't know why. I want Z5 and Z6. Z just sounds wrong. I don't know why. <laughs> Even with my love of the Canadia, I still think Z doesn't sound right. It's just very weird. Uh, Z4 and Z6. Knock the camera. Why don't you, Fox? Z4, Z6 goes that way. No, it doesn't. This is Z7. Let's Wait, what have I done here? Z6 is that one with Z4. So that's that one. Z4 and Z7. Oh, here's the right one. Oh, I've messed it up then. Uh, that needs to go that way and that goes that way. There we go. There. I'm a painter, not a builder. I'll keep saying it. There we go. Yeah, so I don't know why it's just saying Z seems wrong. I don't know why. So uh, that's them assembled. I need to get in the big piece. My name's Herbert Big Piece. How are you doing there? Lovely. Right. Thank you very much, Herbert. I'll put that on there. This is where I struggle to get things on the screen now. Uh, and we need to do. So. Two Z7 pieces. So we've got. Actually not put that there just yet. Two Z7 pieces, which is Z7, 6, 7, uh, and a 3. So O3 is there, and it wants to go like that. Look at that, seamless! You just, can't see the join, but you can see a little bit of a join. Not really a lot of join, a little bit of join. Okay, then this one goes on that end, so that's going to go there like that. Now I'm not going to glue these parts together because th these are going to be jammed in place. I'm not gluing, like I said, I'm not actually gluing everything together. Everything in the world is not getting glued into place. Now we're bringing the big Herbert big piece again. Say it like the Japanese fox, Zedo. Uh, and then we have these pieces need to go in an orientation, which is I'm going to guess this way. This goes here. So these go into the little little holes here. You can see, I think. And now I apologise, this isn't quite on camera. So that pushes in there. Now I'm not going to glue these in. They're not going to be the tightest fit in the world. But they will have, of course, eventually... The, it's not even in the hole. They will have the upper hole on top of them. I do this on camera. It's not as easy as you think. Uh, I'm going to go there. There we go, that's better. Wait a minute. That needs to go there. Okay, that's not lining up. So what have I done wrong here? I've got it that way around. Let's try it that way around. That goes there like that. That goes there. There we go. Yes, so these pegs on the top here are space different to the ones on the bottom. So you can't do it that way because they don't line up. You have to do it this way. So nice one, Bandai. Designed for idiots like me who can't look at simple patterns and shapes. If I just put it back the wrong way again, <laughs> let's find out. It's not. Okay, so that, yeah, there we go. So that's, I put that piece on the wrong way. So that needs to go there. 
that needs to be that way up. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that's cool. Easily recovered, uh, I think. That goes there, that goes there, and then that one goes there. I think that's the right way up. It wouldn't be one of my streams if I didn't do something up. Come on now. Those two in there, those two in there. Yeah, so if it doesn't fit, you've just got the wrong way up. But that's nice the way they've done that. So we'll just push that down. This can go in permanent. This doesn't need to ever come out again. I'm not going to glue it because it's not ever going to come out. There you go, a little bit of that. Uh, then we have the two on either side. So six and six are going to be the same. Uh, and they need to go... Again, it's lined up the pegs with the holes. It doesn't fit that way. It can't go on that way. So that's going to be on this side. Can't see that, can you? Go form out of the way. Right, so yeah. So this piece here, it, two pegs there. They won't. Fit, it, it would fit there, but the pegs don't line up with those two holes. So it's, that's for this end, which will be those two pegs, those two holes, that edge to that edge. Bam, and there it is. Bottom of your avatar's foot. Nobody gets that reference whenever I make it. Nobody remembers the Xbox 360 when it first launched. God, I don't know. Now this one, logically, that's the corner. That's the edge. So that's going to go on there. Bam, and there it is. Done. Now you've got this little gap here between the pieces. That gap there and that gap there. Nobody cares. You're not going to see that. Once the cover's over the top, it's never going to be seen again. So there we go. So that's in. So when it does come to painty painty, I say there may be some edges in there that it won't catch. I know you can't see that because the camera's in the wrong place. There may be some edges in here that the paint won't catch and the primer, but it's fine because it's black. It's kind of hidden. So there we go. So that is in forever. forever. I'm not going to glue it in just in case, just on the off chance I need to get it out again, but I don't think I will be. Now, the next step in the destructions is putting in the clear pieces for the uh, light diffusers. We're not going to do that. We're going to get everything painted first. So that's going to go on hold. So I need to mark off that I've done, done these. Done. Done that. Not done yet. There we go. Done that one as well. Cool. Do, do, do. Right, so I can put this bit to one side. Let's have a quick look at the chattings. Z not Z says Philip Buck. Z Z Spru layers. Z is correct as in ZPM. He <laughs> says Oswick. Nice Stargate reference. Uh, Graham M got to go. Hopefully I'll catch up later. Thanks for coming and you've already gone. I don't know. Says, so but thank you anyway. I looked up and all I could see was giant flying hamburger, says Model Making Mayhem. Uh, Lewis, the Model Making Trucker, is in. Welcome, Lewis. Having a quick pause, are we? Uh, Gamer Tag Fox on Xbox, says Philip Book. Uh, if you, uh, I have my own personal Gamer Tag. Swig of coffee. Um, but when I do live stream gaming. Uh, I use, I've got two gamer tags. One is my personal one, which is real life friends only, obviously. Uh, and, one, and some people I don't know. Uh, and a couple of Bungie employees. For some reason, I've got a couple of Bungie employees on my Xbox friends list. I kind of, I used to know them many, many years ago. I don't quite know how that happened, but they know. I, don't, I think they still work there. Do they still work there? Yes, one of them does. Um, yeah, so I used to play Halo with guys. Just, anyway, and, um, uh, and then I've got a secondary one, which is just Guru Fox, which is the one I use for my um, uh, game streams and stuff like that but yes my real life one is just friends only real life friends only uh... right so so now we've done all that not done that but yeah, we'll do that later so now we've got to make a little under area we've got to make an under area who were matron so it's tiny fiddly tiny parts again so where are we so we need uh parts q20 21 and 22 let's find the q sprue w that's w 
That's G. G! This will be the kill sprue. Blimey, look at the size of that. I didn't realise it was actually that big. These are the bits, you know, the, the bits underneath here. Uh, on, on, the, on the forward part of the hull. You can't see that. On the forward part of the hull here, there's like, I'm, I'm kind of pointing to nothing, aren't I? It's a bit pointless. There's the bit, I didn't realise the cutouts were quite that big. And I've built one 72nd scale ones before. Woo. Right, so. Uh, we need Q20, 21, 22. So let's get these off the sprue first of all. 20. Mm -hmm. It's getting warm in here. 21, which is 21 there. I'm taking bits of the sprue off with it because I'm going to clean those up in a second. I'm using my big, big dodder nippers, which are not great for delicate parts. And Vandu, which here, and I think we can all probably identify this when I hold it up to the camera in a second. Do, 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 do. And this is the amazing thing about this kit. Because Bandai have gone to all the effort of accurizing the, the greebles and details. Let me pull this up to the camera and I'll change the focus. Hang on, this is going to go a bit fiddly. Uh, I'm just going to quickly, sorry guys, give me one second. I'm just going to quickly check something. Uh, give me some microphone issues, one moment. Yeah, let me just double check. That's still on. We'll do in a second, chaps and chapesses. Right, there we go. Right, uh, let me let me try and zoom in on this for you a little bit. I can't zoom in much, so I'll just have to adjust my focus as I go along. So, all you armor builders out there, what? is that from i know it's not very well lit and it's hard to kind of make out and it's probably not even in focus oh, i'm dropping it as well which doesn't help i can't move the camera so hold it there and i've got the wrong glasses on to see what i'm actually focusing on but oh, where is it there that's a tank or an armor vip you can see half the turret here and there's some vents on the back that's the back of a tank. That's the that's the turret there. I hope you can see that. I hope it's coming out on camera. I can't really judge the focus. So yeah, what what tank is that? Is that a panther or something? Or see what that. But that's how good these these details are. Is that you can actually? I've got to change my focus again. Now hang on, focus tool. No, a bit lower. There we go. That's how good this uh, reproduction is, that the, you can actually identify some of the sort of greeble kit bash parts that were originally on the real studio model. And apparently what I heard was that Tamiya, uh, Tamiya Bandai did also <coughs> do research on the greebles that they used and sourced the original kit parts to scan them rather than the bits on the Falcon, Studio Falcon. Um, hello outside barking dog, says Paul. Yes. Uh, Phil Lewis suggests it's a T-34 engine deck could well be it's, it's been a 1970s Tamiya tank kit they used a lot of it's not looking German to me though I don't quite know what it is T-34 might be right but yeah they actually found a lot of uh, the original Greebles uh, and rather than just try and use the laser scans that they did of the filming model they just went out and got those kits and scanned in those parts so technically I, would, yeah, I don't know if a what are the copyright issues of Bandai scanning a Tamiya tank kit and reproducing it in miniature? There's probably a grey area there somewhere, I would suspect. Interesting for lawyers to debate that one, I think. Uh, where are we? Just down the... Uh, just download it on Steam for the PC. Tank Mechanic. Ooh, loads of fun enjoying this. <laughs> Getting rid of all these nubbles. Get rid of the big chunks first, and then we'll come back and clean up in a second. So you've got to commend, you've got to commend, um, you know, Bandai for the, not just, you know, scanning in the studio model, but doing the research on the greebles as well, and taking it that one step further. Better than Ravel ever did, which was in the in the old days originally when MPC the only model you could get was the MPC Ertl Falcon or the MPC Falcon. They literally were only given access to the you know sketches and design sketches and stuff. They didn't have access to the filming model. This was back in the seventies. 
So you can kind of forgive them a bit initially in the 70s and early 80s for having a garbage Falcon kit because they only had drawings which weren't necessarily spot on accurate. Then Ravel came along and perpetuated that same design. Probably just bought the moulds. Uh, and they do to this day, which is kind of unforgivable because there's nothing stopping Ravel getting access to the studio model at all. There's nothing stopping them getting access to the CGI filming model for reference or anything like that. But being Ravel, all they do is they say, no, we'll just we'll keep churning out this rubbish 1970s based on some drawings version and make that the one for kids. And when we want to do an accurate one, we'll just pay five molds to make theirs. We'll just rebatch it. There you go. So yeah, it's kind of frustrating in a way. Way back a few years ago when the Star Wars license, uh, when Disney was sorting everything out with Star Wars and they gave the Star Wars license out. It was like, who's going to get the license? Who's going to get the license? And it was like, yeah, it's no longer going to be with uh, fine molds. Uh, we're going to give the license to Ravel. And the entire model making all went, oh, sadness. But to their credit, they did then say to fine molds, we'll, we'll buy your toolings and you make them and we'll sell them under our name. But still, I don't know. But having said that, like I said, there are some there, some of the Ravel Star Wars kits are okay. They're not that bad. The Land Speeder was simplistic but easily up, updated and, and you know greebled up. It was fine. Other than that, the uh, Jedi Starfighter, strangely, is actually quite a nice little kit. It's quite nicely done. So they're not totally terrible, but most of them are. This looks like the back of a tank. Of some part looks like you can't see there, but it looks like the back grille of some sort of tanky type vehicle. Do, 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 do. So there was a collective global model making sigh of relief when it was revealed that Bandai were going to get a license to do some Star Wars. It was like, yes, we're saved. Finally, a decent manufacturer gets a Star Wars license. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Do, 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 do. Oops. Uh, where are we? What's the chat doing? Uh, people are talking about science and space, games, consoles. I'm not sure where that's going. I'm not getting into console war chat on the stream. Do do do. Right, so that is there. That's that bit. That's that bit cleaned up. I think there's no nubs left on that. Uh, and this big chunk here. So, yeah, so... I mean, those those sort of Ravel cheap cheap kits. They they're good. They're all right. They're fun. They're you know they're fun to put together and they're, they're simple. But they're fun to paint. That's the thing. The beauty of the Falcon. If you're buying you know something that needs to look nice and tidy, then it's not so great. But if you're buying a Millennium Falcon, although it's going to look like it's going to look more close, it's going to look closer to the toy than it is to the actual studio model. But if you just want something to put together, slap together, and paint for funsies. Then absolutely, you know, because appreciate not everybody's got the budget for something like this, or for the the Revell Master series, which is about the same price. The two big difference between if you if you've been eyeing up both the Master series and this, and you're not sure which which to go for, the major differences are the Master series is the original fine molds kit. So the Master series is a proper glue kit. And this needs to go on. Oh look, there's the back of it. There's the back of a panther tank. Here, let's see what we got. I know you can't see very well, but let's have a pointy stick. Where's a pointy stick? We have back of a panther tank with the extractor fan. Thanks, panther tank with the extractor fans. Uh, there is an Apollo LEM module there. You can probably see there's the top half of the LEM, and there's the bottom half of the LEM. All the legs would come out from here, and there's the little thruster bell at the bottom. So there's an Apollo 11 LEM. 
Uh, we have some engine block bits and bobs. That's all I can. I can't quite identify this. I'm not sure what that's from. It's like some kind of engine component from something. Um, so yeah, and there's uh, there is the gas mask canister from a German soldier. Remember when they did kit bash this, they would use all different scale kits. So on one part we saw earlier on, they had uh, big cylinder things which were probably like one sixth scale German soldier kit gas mask cylinders because Tamiya did a range of one sixth scale figures. Uh, this is quite small, so this on the studio model will probably come out at, I don't know, yeah, it's that big there. That might be a 135th scale figures gas mask canister, maybe. So we've got a gas mask canister, a, a lem, really tiny lem, so I don't know what original scale that would have been, and the back of a panther. And some other bits and bobs I can't quite place. Uh, right, so let's have a look. This needs to go on here like this, was it? Goes on here first. You're a satisfying noise. Yes, yes, that was lovely. I <laughs> went in right nice. And then on the back of that goes this into there. Now these are all things that could have just been molded in. And if you get like even the fine molds kit, these are mostly just molded details. But the beauty of doing them separately is that we get these gaps in between underneath, which I've never seen before in a Millennium Falcon kit under there. You get gaps under there and this is probably where bandai would have gone in and found what kit this piece of tank hull was from and scanned that and laser scanned that and then made it fit rather than you know made it fit with the original studio model version uh, now i'm going to glue these uh because like i've said before this will be going to be models that they may drop it break it handle it knock something off if i don't glue everything so this will be getting glued and these are just greeble so it doesn't matter if i glue these there's no worry if I glue these in place. It's absolutely fine. So this is more just for the fact that it's going to be in their cabinets and they may move it at some point and I don't want bits falling off because I'm not driving all the way to Stoke to stick a greeble back on because it's fallen off. So yeah, they just get, these just get placed and then glued. chat doing mm -hmm. uh, model making mayhem says I'd rather be cleaning the house and getting my work sorted than being on this laptop I'm guessing you're on a bad laptop these things may pass uh, next we have K57 K K57 cashier number four please 57 57 Okay. Have I not got the case brew out? I have not got the case brew out. I probably need one thing from the case brew. Oh, hang on. No, yes, I have. It is. It is. Oh, it's one of these. It's one of these delicate fiddly ones that I've got in a special plastic sleeve to keep it safe. So I need K57. Now I'm using the little tiny uh, good quality nippers for these. I don't normally suggest using your expensive nippers for this purpose. But these are tiny parts and the sprue, the gates are very, very thin. And I can kind of control them better. So it's not the end of the world. I wouldn't use these on like a Games Workshop sprue, obviously. But because these are tiny parts, I can, and tiny gates. V-gate? I, uh, I can get away with God handing those. So that goes back in the bag. If you're wondering why these are staying in plastic sleeves, it's because of all the little tiny, tiny parts. I don't want to put my hand in the box and catch half of these and ping them and snap them in half. And I have to report so far, we've had huge success. I have not snapped any single pipe or tubing at all yet. Not at all. No snappage has occurred. Put that there. Uh, where are we up to? So this had... Where were the nubs? I can't actually remember where I've just cut it from. There's one. I need liberations. And the other one was there. Tiny. The advantage of using your decent nippers is, of course, you've got less cleanup to do. Uh, there was a tiny nub on that pipe, but it's almost invisible. 
It's like the dreaded Bew Bew Guy Guy, mate. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's like the dreaded Bew Bew Guy Guy. It's invisible. Hover six foot off the ground. It's invisible. It makes a silent noise. If you don't know what that is, it's an old fast show sketch. Uh, where are we? K7 goes into... Uh, like this, you see? Hopefully I'm on camera. Where's the... Yeah. Uh, this goes in here. Nah. Get in the hole. That goes through... Oh, I say that goes through that little bit there. Oh, that's lovely. Oh... Oh, that's lovely. I don't you can't probably see it, but there's a little sort of half C shaped clip there. And this pipe goes into the thing underneath it, which is the vent. It's like the exhaust, the, the cooling vent on a Panther. It goes through that C clip down into the vent hole. Oh, that is beautiful. That is incredibly awesome. That is fantastic. Bandai, I'm just I give you all the awards for that. That is just absolutely beautiful. That is outstanding. I am colour me totally super impressed on that one. That is just fabulous. And to have something like that on a tiny, inconsequential, almost invisible greeble that's going to be underneath that you're never ever going to see. And yet that that is just fantastic fantastic right <clears throat> swig of coffee nom, nom, nom. <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. people talking about computers and consoles and stuff in the chat <clears throat> i have no no knowledge of computers i'm looking forward to getting the new xbox when it comes out uh, even Digital Foundry has said that when the new consoles come out for a little while, they'll be more powerful than most um, commercially available PC components. In terms of, like, you know, SSD access and stuff. Which is kind of cool. It won't take long for PCs to kick back over again and become more more powered. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, Series X, absolutely. Colour me buying the crap out of that when it comes out. Yes. And then I can play Skyrim in still in 4K and HDR. Well, never mind. It'll just be nicer. <laughs> People, oh, sorry, knocking the camera. People are talking about graphics cards now, and I've got no idea. I don't. I don't really care about graphics cards. I'm a console gamer, not a computer gamer, not a PC gamer. Uh, I'm far too inept to worry about technical nonsense. I just want to put the game in and play it, and there you go. Bang. There you go. Done. Right. Q. I need. Q18. I need Sprue Q. Sprue Q. Cashier number 18, please. Uh, Q18, which is. Oh, lots of lovely details on there. Q18 is somewhere. There's 19. There's 18. There's 6. Uh. Hey, there. Oh, it's, ooh, look at the, oh, this looks lovely. Oh, this looks beautiful. I've got to be careful on this, but look at that bit there. <gasps> careful. I'm using my big dodder nippers for this, but I'm taking a risk. But it's probably too big and thick to risk my god hands on. So, oh, it looks like a chunk of crane of some sort, like a model crane, but I don't know what it's from. It's not part of the pontoon bridge, I don't think, because it's not, I'm not seeing. It doesn't remind me of the, doesn't look like the pontoon bridge stuff. Uh, I need to put that there. Got some small bits as well. Uh, I need Q19, which is the next one along. I just need a K part as well, don't I? Uh, Q19, which I can snip off there because all the all the nubs are on the stubs. Or oh, well, not the stubs, the connection points. Uh, Q23, which is that one. Uh, 
Now let's get the end off first. There we go. And a middle bit. Sniptons. And then the end. We need. Let's get them two bits further, them three bits. Then we need to back to the case, bro. Let's go back to the case, bro. Uh, K62. Small clippers time again. K62. Move this down a bit. K62. K62. Right, I'm out of things to talk about. So you guys need to <clears throat> be asking me questions about anything you want. Ask me questions about things. Ask me anything. Give me, for the love of dog, give me things to talk about because I'm spent. I'm actually just thinking about KFC completely now. I'm, I'm so I've, I've just desperately need things to talk about. K49 and K40. K49. I remember what we said last time when you're cutting like thin pipes off the sprues. If you've got like an end piece where it's attached and a sort of not end piece in the middle somewhere, if I cut this bit first, it's going to have a fit, a bend, a flex point there and it might snap there. Whereas that's at the end. So if I cut this bit first, there, that's fine. Always try and keep a mental note of the flex points on bits that are attached. Uh, and K40, which is this piece that's attached at the end, at the end, at the middle. So if I cut one of these end pieces off, it's going to flex there. If I cut this piece off first, it's going to flex at the end, and that's a lot better for me. So let's carefully snip this one. See, it flexed, it bent up there. But it's not as bad, though, as if I'd done it from the other end. So you've got to try and... Keep a mental note of where the flex, where it's going to bend and flex. You get an instinct for it eventually. You may not know straight away, but eventually, as you get more experienced, you'll get a feel for where bits are going to bend and flex when you cut them off the sprue. But thankfully, in life, you don't often come across like 500 individual pipe parts. Not as often. KFC Gravy or Bisto, says Model Making Trucker. KFC Gravy, I think. On KFC. See, Bisto is nice, but I actually prefer onion gravy, Bisto onion gravy, than just regular Bisto. And I actually prefer Bisto chicken gravy. Or if you want a real treat, mix regular Bisto gravy and chicken gravy. Do both. But I prefer the onion gravy, because that's much nicer. Beef and onion. I like me some onions. But on KFC, yeah, it's KFC gravy. Why make gravy when I can, little man can just deliver me a small pot of it? It's just crazy talk. Uh, I think this is going to be... Is it going to be underneath? Do I need to work on that? That's not actually a mould line. It's actually a deliberate... Or is it? No, it might be a mould line. Let's just see how this attaches, because I may not need to clean that up. That might be an undersurface that doesn't get seen. Is on camera? Yeah. Yes, ask me questions about anything, folks. Give me stuff to talk about. Remember, if you're going to ask a question, put it in big fat capital letters so I have a chance to see it because I'm all the way over here with my space helmet on and I can't see anything with my space helmet on that's more than that far away. Uh, do it big fat capital letters or do a super chat if you want to. You don't have to. It's entirely up to you. Super chat puts it in a big colour box. Uh, can't actually see the nubs on that, so I'm guessing they were on the. Uh, where's my thing? File. Guessing they were on that bit there, and that bit there, yes. I'm sure there's a top nub. Just quickly file, that's just easier to file it. There you go. Uh, yes, yeah, so ask me lots of questions. Give me, for the love of dog, ask me questions. Uh, Philip Book says, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? It's easy. Uh, I need to sniffle my nose because the cameras and lights are on and bizarrely it didn't happen straight away. Give me some tissue. Doodle -doo, doodle -doo, doo doo Oh, I got sniffly nose. Bear. Oh, sniffle, sniffle, sniffle. My apologies. Uh 
People are talking about graphics cards. It's boring. Stop talking about graphics cards. It's boring. Nobody cares. <laughs> Talk about something else. <laughs> uh, I don't know. PC gamers and their technical nonsense. How many bears could a bear grills grill if a bear grills called bear grill? Oh, I messed that one up. How many bears could a bear grills grill if a... Oh. How many bears could a bear's... It's because I'm not used to saying it. How many bears could bear grills... Gr oh. How many bears could Bear Grylls grill if Bear Grylls could grill bears? I think I got that right. Here's a challenge for you. Say the word everybody, and then say it again with the first letter removed, and then say it again with the next first letter removed, and say it as fast as you can. So take a letter off from the start each time. It should come out as everybody, 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 very buddy, everybody, right, buddy, why, buddy, buddy, or did I why? Well, we've got a big fat pipe, big fat pipe, but it's got a big fat mold line on it. Uh, Fox, I know you're not really a tank man, says Philip Book. Welcome to the Tank Man Show. My name is your host, the Tank Man. Uh, yes, um, what would I build? Uh, I'm not really a tank man. Well, I, I am a kind of tank man. I, I don't mind tanks. You know, I've got me, I've got me some Warhammer tanks in the stash that I need to get on my building. But I'm going to be, I'm going to assume you're not including like Warhammer stuff in there, because that would just be obvious. I'd say I want, I really want to build my Macarius Vanquisher. But we'll exclude Warhammer stuff. Um, if I was building a proper actual tank, like a real world vehicle, which would I build? I would say. I would want to revisit my youth and do the Tamiya 135th T62A. Because that was the first model kit I ever properly painted, built and painted. With the encouragement of my dad. Because up until that point, I used to get a model kit, slap it together and play with it. Because it was just a way, it was a self-assembly toy, basically. But then I built and painted the T62 with no knowledge. This was like the 1980s, so no internet to tell me what the hell to do. I was just brushing onto my paints from the pot onto the plastic. Yeah, get in. No primers. Didn't know any about that. It was like ingredients: one Tamiya one thirty fifth Russian T sixty two A paints, matte black, gloss black. No black, matte black, semi gloss black, flat flesh, olive drab, and that was it. And a pot of thinner. I think that was it. That was my entire. Oh, and a, a gun metal and a um, whatever the flat aluminium was at the time, I think it was. And that was my entire paints for that build. And I just brush painted it. It was some crappy brush. I didn't know. I was like, I was, what was I, 16? No. I was probably about, uh, about 14, 15. And I was like, I didn't know. And there was no internet in them days. So, you know, there was no way for me to know what the correct procedure was. Why am I not using my tin here? Uh, got some tubes to do. So yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd Russian T62 would be my, uh, if we're not including Warhammer stuff, then I'd love to do, a, I'm gonna, I will at some point do another Russian T62. Because those old Tamiya tanks, they are, they are great stuff. If you're, like we said many times, if you're just getting into it and you're thinking, I might like to give armor a try, but I've never built a tank before. And you're just wanting to get into it. And you don't know. You might, you know, you might make some. Either you're a new modeler, or you might be an experienced modeler, but just not really have done armor before. So before you go out and spend, you know, drop sixty or seventy quid on a rye field with five thousand parts and loads of photo etch and everything else that you might not be used to doing, it might be like well advanced. Before you go and do that, plonk down twenty five or thirty quid on a Tamiya of some sort, one thirty fifth. Uh, it'll be a fun build. It, it'll be like 40 year old. It'll be like a 1970s print. So it'll be like 40 odd years old. But it'll still be better than a lot of the kind of tank kits you can, and armor kits you can get today. They still stand up. You know, they hold their own. That's why they're not so expensive. They want a photo etch. They'll have single piece rubber tracks. But the details will be nice and crisp. There'll be a simple assembly and they'll look great. Give that a go. And if you find you enjoy it, then you can say, right, that was pretty good. Let's go and get that Rifle Panther 4 or, you know, the the Tacom 
whatever it is or you know the trumpeter this that and the other with its photo etch and its millions of parts and its tininess it's always a good way to start and even if you're an experienced builder before you plonk down all the money on an expensive you know tacom or rifle or something if you're not familiar with armor and maybe you're not familiar with how to paint weather armor you might not like it and you think oh, i don't really want to they're not cheap have a go at a cheap little little fun tamiya the great entry level armor basically and some of their vehicles their world war ii vehicles they're great entry level into world war ii modeling because they're they're old but they're still accurate and they're still fun and bizarrely um a lot of the good quality high high quality manufacturers at the moment don't put figures in their kits whereas tammy stuff always has figures in it more often than not and even their like 35 40 45 year old kits the figures in those vastly superior to many other manufacturers figures even today like ravel and italeri have no concept of what the human body is supposed to actually look like and therefore without fail whenever you get a figure in italeri kit it's pretty much garbage or a ravel kit they just they'd have no idea which is often quite nice when you get like an italeri ravel like, oh thank god it's not got a figure with it <laughs> it's just yeah so you know, Tammy is 135th figures. They're not they're not perfect. They're like 45 odd years old, but they stand up today. They stand up to a lot of things and they they stand up to a lot of figures that when you go out and you buy a pack of just a 135th figure or a little squad of dudes from like some of the more modern uh, manufacturers, they they can stand up to them. So yeah, always worth it. Tammy is always a good friend. Always a good place to uh, to start off. Uh, right, so I need to get these bits assembled. Hey, folks, what are you going to use for weathering the Falcon? You mentioned Starship Phil through the stream, but what else? How about the metallic stuff? Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out because, if you remember, this is a Bandai kit. Bandai plastic is a pain in the butt. Um, my traditional method, the first thing I would do for weathering would be to make a very, very thin wash of Tamiya smoke and wash it everywhere. On this kit, it will probably fall apart because the plastic will just dissolve in many places so there's a lot of little nooks and crannies you won't get primer in and it would eat it alive so i can't do that so my plan is i'm not fully sure yet but i know there'll be there'll be definitely pre-shading uh then there will be definitely streaking and filtering and there'll be a dot filter there'll probably uh there'll be streaking and that will mostly be oils streaking and filters done with oils so it's going to be a lot of oil paint weathering on there streaking and stuff because I can use thinners, I can use oil paint thinners if it's a moistened, if it's a damp brush that I'm doing up and down. If I'm not slapping thinners everywhere, I can get away with it. Um, and I'll be, I don't know if I'll be painting any chipping on. There is chipping on the Falcon, but the decals already have a lot of chipping on them. But I don't know, we'll see when that comes. Um, I think mostly oils. The, the thing with the Falcon is, this is the challenge. It's taken me a lot, it'll take me vastly longer to build this thing than it will to actually paint it. Because painting the Falcon is not actually that hard. It's one of the easiest things you can paint. It just takes a while. Model making trucker, gotta go, guys. Have fun. Thanks for coming in, Lewis. Take care of yourself, buddy. Ba -ba -ba. Paul De Tomaso is in. Hey, Paul. Welcome, my friend. Right, so Q18 is the one that looks like a bit of a crane thing going on. I'm not sure what that, that must be from a bridge kit of some part, like a pontoon. I don't, it doesn't remind me of the pontoon bridge. It doesn't look the same because that had V shapes, not X shapes. That must be from something else. Uh, there is another legendary kit that uh, a lot of sort of classic sci-fi models, model makers used for Greebles. And like it said Anzio something, Anzio Annie or something. I don't know what it was, but it's obviously some kind of bridge. That, I don't know what it's from. There is some other legendary kit that it's probably from that. This needs to go there. I mean, this level of detail, obviously I never finished the Diagostini Falcon, so I don't know how accurate that was, but this level of detail on this bit, this is blowing even the fire molds out of the water. Because don't forget, for many years, the fire molds was the absolute pinnacle of Millennium Falcon accuracy. You go online and you plonk down 300 quid for your fine molds falcon from Japan and it'd take, you know, six weeks to get to you. And you'd have this stunning 172nd scale falcon with it's over 900 parts, about 930 parts in it. 
Uh, and at the time, that was just absolutely the most accurate Millennium Falcon that you could money could buy at all, ever, in the history of the universe. That was it. Uh, and then this came along, and it's like, blowing it out of the water. It's still a really nice kit, but this blows out of the water. Uh, that needs to go like that. So Q19 goes... YouTube uh, blocked uh, Radio Modeler's comment because he said shoot and it'd shoot off. Come on YouTube, it's not that bad mate. Right, so that goes in there. Bloop. Tube! Tube! I'm tubing! I'm tubing now! I'm tubing bigly. Uh, this needs to go into some tholes. Yeah, so for a long, long time, if you wanted accuracy, your only option was the Fine Molds Falcon. <clears throat> and then the Diagostini Falcon came out. I mean, there was the, there was the, um, what's that company called? The one that did the, the, the studio size one that Steve Dimso was involved in. His company that did um, replicas of studio models. <clears throat> I can't remember what that was called. Uh, and that apparently was, as well, was also one of the most accurate Falcons. But that was pre-made, pre-painted. And it was like thousands it was like fifteen hundred dollars and nowadays if you see them i can't remember what the company was called now they've gone they're long gone that was one of the most accurate ones um but then the diagostini falcon came out and that was steve dimzo again was involved in that diagostini falcon came out and then that for a little while was possibly one of the most accurate i don't know because i never finished building it but that was supposedly meant to be one of the most accurate because it <clears throat> Because it included some parts that had been lost off the filming miniature when the fire molds and when the Steve Dismo's original, whatever that company was called, um, made their replicas. Master replicas, that's what it was called. Master replicas. Um, they they used the studio model, but then some parts were found missing off the studio model and some research was done and they, they relocated these parts. So then that was supposed to be incorporated into the Diagostini one. But I've also read things that said the Diagostini one had a lot of shortcomings. So I don't know how accurate that was. But of course, that was a thousand pounds. That was the part work and it was a thousand pounds compared to Fine Mold's 300 quid, uh, 170 second scale. But now this has come out and the Bandai, this Bandai one, this is... I, I don't know if it's more accurate than the Diagostini. It probably is. But it's also not a thousand pounds. Well, it's actually 800 quid now for the Diag one. Now this goes there, maybe? But that is the thing with the Diag one. It's fantastic, but it's so big. It's huge. So, oh, it's another pipe that goes into that little C-clip. Oh, you beautiful piece of engineering. <gasps> Bandai, I want to marry you and have your children. And I hate children. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Although it's got this big flask, big sort of tab there, which is a bit... Which is a bit... Okay, there's a big tab that holds it in place. That's a bit... But we can live with that. That is fantastic. Ready Modeler's off. I'm off going later. See you later, dude. Enjoy meeting up with your lady friend for your little tryst. Raging and lady friend in a tree. Playing probably D and D. <laughs> yeah, we know what you get up to. You just play D and D. That's where babies come from. You roll a D twenty, and <laughs> the baby comes out the other end. I don't know. I'm making that up now. So now we're Q twenty three on these two. So we need to attach this to that. Uh, this needs to go like, like that. What was I talking about? I've got no idea. I've lost my thread now. I lost what I was talking about. It needs to go in there. Yeah, so I, I, I say I can't speak to how accurate the, D, the Diag Falcon is. I never actually finished it. But my suspicion would be, from the little bit that I did make, it would be reasonably accurate, but not that accurate. Not like this accurate. Because there's no way you'd be getting this level of accuracy on something that big from Diagostini. I mean, just basing it off 
you know the x-wing i'm building at the minute which you can see there's a lot of corners cut and things yeah that's not quite right and this isn't quite right and looking at the interior you know when we had the interior for that dagestini falcon of course that was kind of yeah that was not great and just looking at purely the amount of you know people on shapeways and stuff selling photo etch things and accurized parts for the diag falcon and stuff yeah this, it, it i don't think it would hold a candle to this i don't know if it's more accurate than the the fine ones one it might be it might not i don't know yeah, right that's that bit done that's and them done uh next what we got next more no oh no not more pipes just yet uh but do, do, do questions anyone have an experience with industrial mechanical kits a local here has the zero that i'm interested in yes i've not got any experience with them but industrial mechanica is the chap who did uh what's his name fichtenfu fichtenfu who i many many years ago watched his how to paint the millennium falcon tutorial it's him they're supposed to be very good they're resin kits and resin and metal aren't they um yeah, it's supposed to be very good. Yeah, keep in mind the Diagostini Falcon, of course, is like 35 feet across. It's massive and huge. So that, there is that one advantage going for it. it. It may not be, say, perhaps as accurate as this, but it's also like four times the size, and it's as big as a child. So it's a bit more impressive. Right, so we need some parts. We need case brew. Oh, it's all case brew now. Uh, L1. Put my dog tags in because they're rattling. Team Nep says, how do you know how big the Diag Falcon is? Well, he says, how do you know the Diag Falcon is? But he misses out the word big because he's inept. I'll add that word back in for you. Uh, right, so we need some parts. K, lots of K parts. A Q, we'll get the Q parts off the sprue first. Let's get them a bit done first. Uh, we have... Yeah, ask me questions, folks. Beck Storm says, Fox, face palm, Fox, smiley. Why? What did I do? What did I do now? Oh, what have I done? <laughs> uh, right, so we need, let's just get some pieces off the spring and stop farting about. Uh, screw on Q. Q5, which is cache number five, please. More tank. I can see more tank bits on there. Q53, there it is. Q5. These are kind of fairly flat parts, so it's not a big problem if I use the big sprue, the big cutters on these. Uh, because they're fairly honking parts. On my wish list are the Empire Strikes Back version of the Falcon and the 172nd TIE Bomber. The fine molds one is actually a bit closer to the Empire Strikes Back. It's still a kind of hodgepodge of the Empire Strikes Back and New Hope. This is apparently a hodgepodge of New Hope. This is more like the New Hope with some Empire Strikes Back touches, apparently. I didn't know the New Hope Falcon had the gash in the bottom of the hull. I didn't know that. I think it does. Because this is supposed to be more like the New Hope one. So I don't know if... I, I thought that was an Empire Strikes Back version only, that thing there. I didn't realise that. I think this is like a this is like a homage to both with a little bit of Empire Strikes Back playing, but I think the fine mods one is more towards the Empire Strikes Back one. Gash in the bottom of the hole, says Paul. Right, what am I getting a face palm for back? I, I don't know what I said. I mean I don't know what I say most of the time. Let's just be perfectly honest about it. Uh, Q3, which is that one. That can go to one side. I can go over there. I'm assuming I said something dopey again as normal. Uh, if you prime all the sub-assemblies and then prime the build, could you do a wash as Ian Thompson? Um, I would not recommend putting any kind of thin paint wash on your £399 Bandai kit. For the exact reason that sentence explains. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not worth the risk. If this was a £25 Gumpler kit, yeah, go for it. If this is a £350 quid Bandai perfect grade kit, no, don't take the risk. Now, also, if you were to prime the sub-assemblies, you've still got things like that gap there, in there. Am I definitely going to get primer in there? If I'm not, 
am I going to have all these components on sticks and paint them? In which case, there's probably over like 1,200 parts in this kit that's going to take years to paint. And it's all one colour, so it's not worth the hassle. It's not worth the risk. Just don't don't take the risk with Bandai. There's plenty of other things we can do and ways to do it. I'll be able to do washes, just not wash not a wash that is. If I was going to do a wash, it would have to be like a water-based clay wash, like the UMP stuff, you know, where it's just water and clay and colouring, and that's it. Where there's no thinness. It's just. I mean, I'm going to be careful when I do um, dot filters and streaking because I'm going to have to use oil paint thinners, but I'm going to have to make sure the brush is damp, not wet. Because if I've got a damp brush and I'm doing that on the surface, that's fine. It's not pooling anywhere and eating alive. If I've got a wet brush and it's slopping thinner everywhere, that's the problem. So, yeah, I I wouldn't risk it. Not on this kit. If it was like a, if a little little cheap high grade high grade gumpler, go for it. You've spent twenty quid on that. It's not the end of the world if it falls apart. But something like this, no. It's a bit like saying, "Can I clean my my Ferrari with an old rag full of stones?" You can if you want. <laughs> uh, right, so that's uh, Q five. We've got Q three. Any more kills? Kill two, kill six, and one, one six and two, one six. And also two, yeah, that's it. Rusty. One, two, six. All right, so we've got separate bits of bridgey things here. I appreciate I'm probably not on camera. Snicked. I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna leave a bit of sprue on here. Oh, there's a middle bit there. Now this is challenging because it's all middle bits. Mm. I may have to risk my expensive nonsense here and just. Oh, I don't like doing that. I don't like doing that. Not with these nippers. But they're all middle parts and they're all going to be under stress. So, ooh, that's stressful that was. That were right stressful that were. Oh. But now it's released on that side, I can go back in on this side and hopefully nip them without putting it under any stress. There you go. Because now it can now it could bend that way. Of course, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. Uh, right, so that was uh, two, six, and one I need. So there's one. Piece number one, please. And number six, which is that one. There, there we go. See, Games Workshop, how Bandai does this. They have all the numbered sprues roughly in the right order on the same sprue. And you only did a few sprues for each step of the build. It's amazing. Also, numbering things on the sprue is also a good, a good start as well. Right, so that's them. I'm going to keep them there because they're all big bits. I'll be using water-based clay washes on mine when I get around to building it. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, I mean, I, I quite like the idea of them. I've not really got on with them as much myself, clean them off again, but they do work quite nicely. But it depends what you want to do, what effects you're looking for. I'm looking for a swig of coffee, that's what I'm looking for. Gone down half. Uh, but I've only been going for an hour and a half. Uh, Philip, but question: What compressor and spray guns do you use, Fox? And why do you find that certain makes really are poop? Um, I don't use spray guns because it's not a body shop, but I use an airbrush. <laughs> spray guns are generally big, massive things for spraying cars. I have two airbrushes, uh, one of which is under my desk and I can't get to, uh, which is the uh, Iwata Revolute. In fact, yes, I can. Stop being a big girl, Fox, and just grab the damn thing got the Iwata Revolution Boop. and I have an Iwata Neo. Uh, two different purposes. This is a 0.35 nozzle. I have uh, grumpy old man hands and I can't I can't do that for more than about five minutes without cramps and pain. If I was spraying, sometimes my spray sessions could be an hour long. If it's a gumpler, master grade gumpler, two hours long. I can't sit and do this with my hand in that position for more than 10 minutes before I'm like, ah, oh, agony. Um, which is why I've got this, because I can have my hand like that. That's perfect. That's I could sit and spray with this for like three hours non-stop, off my compressor would explode. I, I found that much better. Uh, but this is 0.35 nozzle. Uh, and this is my general purpose do everything brush. Uh, it's one of the original first generation ones, which I don't think was solved. I don't know 100% it's solvent safe. When they first came out, it didn't say anywhere. I think they do now. It says it's solvent safe. But when they first came out, 
it didn't say solvent safe anywhere. Now I have occasionally risked it for a biscuit, you know, risk it for a biscuit and put some like alcohol through it. But I, I use this on the basis that it's not solvent safe. So this goes from all my painting and stuff. Uh, this is my, it's a bit older, it's a 0.5. So it's got a wider cone of happiness when it sprays. And this is like, this is like, you know, indestructible. This is solvent safe. So this goes for anything, anytime I need to spray enamels or lacquers, this gets used. If I'm doing something quick, now this is another thing I use as well. I'll explain in a minute, but uh, if I want to do something quickly, uh, like if I've got, if I had to paint just that, but I don't want to spend ages getting this, getting it sorted out, spray, clean it out, yada yada. Because, you know, if I was just spraying that on its own, it'd take me longer to clean this brush than it would to actually do the spraying of that. I'd spend two minutes spraying that and 15 minutes cleaning that out. So this, because it's solvent safe, I was if I've got a little tiny thing to spray and it's only going to be a few minutes, I'll wop this out because I can, once I finish spraying, I can just run isopropyl alcohol through this, no worries, and it'll clean it out dead nicely. And I can get it cleaned out in two minutes rather than that, which is, you know, five minute, ten minute job. So this is that it gets used for quick stuff that I, so I can just clean it out quickly. Uh, and anything where I need bigness, like if I've got a big flat area, when you see, I would love to paint the base coat for this in with this, but it would kill my hands. So I can't, but theoretically I would use it for bigger things. Uh, and for anything that's solvent, that needs solvents, enamel, lacquers, anything like that goes through this because I can't guarantee that's usable on lacquers. Uh, why do I use them? Do I have any preference? I don't actually have a preference to brands. I have used uh, three brands in my time. I've used three brands of airbrush properly. I've used more, but I've tested out. Well, I've used it water. I like it water. They're nice and simple and reliable. I've never had to have this repaired. Never, it's never broken. Same with this. This is about five years old now. And I've never even changed the seals. Um, I find it completely reliable and simple to take apart. I have used a, a few Sparmax brushes over the years. And they're made in the same factory as the Awatas. They're also made by in the same components and the same tools. So often they're actually the same brush, more or less. They're also pretty good. Uh, and they're a bit cheaper, so they can be more of a budget entry. I have used uh, a Mr. Color Pro Scion Boy. Was it Mr. Hobby Pro Scion Boy? That was quite nice, but I only used it to test it out. I didn't use it for more than a couple of hours. So I can't really say what I think about those. Not really got enough experience. I also had a DeVilbis Dagger for a few years which is a proper professional automotive company that makes spray guns. Uh, and that was a really nice airbrush, but something in it broke and it, I couldn't figure out what it was. And I just put it away and never used it again. It wasn't as user friendly as the waters. So, and also it was harder to get parts. So, so yeah, but uh, and so no real bias. Compressor wise, um, doesn't really matter. When it comes to compressors, how much noise can you make? And do you want a tank? And what's your budget? That's it. With compressors, you can go for the cheapy, cheap stuff. You don't have to spend a fortune. If it puts air out, it's probably fine. With compressors, it's more like how long will it last before it dies and you have to buy a new one than how reliable is it. Compressors, the 99% of compressors, they do the job. And even the cheapest of cheap Chinese knockoffs, I've got one of the desk here. I've had it for like years. It, it's, it's fine. It's not, it's the quality is where you get to quality, that's airbrushes. Compressor doesn't really matter. You want it to be, if you live in a tiny little apartment with neighbors on all sides, you probably want a quiet one. If you live by yourself in a detached house, you can go for a big honking one. It doesn't really matter. I would just say, look for something with a tank if you can. It gives you more stable airflow. Airbrush wise, again, work to your budget. But don't start off with the 20 pound compressor and airbrush kits you find on eBay because they're not gonna be great. If you if you know what you're doing with, this is what we always say. If you know what you're doing with an airbrush, I could go off, I could go and buy a 20 quid airbrush and compressor, so I could buy a 20 quid airbrush off eBay. Uh, and it would probably be, it might be all right, but it would not be perfect. And it would possibly be garbage. But I would spray with it, and they might have a weird wonky spray pattern, or it may be a bit bitty, or it might not be quite lined up, or the nozzle might not be built very well, and it'll have imperfections, and the needle might not line up with the nozzle because it's not tooled very well. But I will know that, and I'll see it, and I'll understand it's the brush that's at fault. If you know what you're doing, there's nothing wrong with the cheapy cheap ones because you can use them for like your gloss sprays and your varnishes and all your hard work that you don't want to put through your nice airbrush. If you're learning and you're new, you don't want to do that because you might spray and get a terrible spray pattern and not know that it's the brush that's the problem. You might think, I'm rubbish at this. I can't do this. I'm never going to airbrush ever again. 
but you might not realize that it's a cheap crappy airbrush with a nozzle that's not tooled very well and doesn't quite line up with the with the nut with the needle or the 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 the, uh, the seal inside is poor quality and therefore is not very good and it's letting water through or air through you don't know you won't know where why there's air going back into the cup you won't know all that so if, you, if you're just starting out go for a name brand iwata uh, depending on where you are iwata badger pash harder and steam bet spa max spray max it's sometimes called um the mr hobby ones are apparently quite good i've only said i've only used the precision board a little bit and that was all right um so i say mr hobby probably all right uh just stick to those kind of brand names mostly because they're established and they're easy to get parts for if you go for some no name thing off ebay what happens when you need a spare, a spare needle or you need a spare a replacement seal you don't even know what brand it is good luck yeah stick to the name brands at least you can get spare parts if you need them and they're usually more intuitive and the better quality it's just you know it's a bit like saying there's a there's a you know there's a there's a car there's a chinese car you can buy for like a grand and it's the world's cheapest car or you could buy a ferrari what's the difference well there's a massive difference there's a big difference between my fiesta and you know a range rover it's in price it's a whole different market but you get what you pay for and i wouldn't i always say don't learn on a cheapy cheap crappy knockoff airbrush because you don't know what's your fault and what's the airbrush's fault and if you don't know that if you're learning if you don't know that you might be discouraged and i say it all the time but there's no point trying to learn to ride a bike on a bike that's got square wheels uh, right so i need parts now uh <laughs> Team and says, whatever brush you buy from eModels will be just fine. That's eModels. eModels.co.uk. Uh, Master Airbrush. Uh, I've heard of Master Airbrush. I don't know if they're good or not. I mean, I'm sure they probably are. I think they're all right. If you're in the UK, though, and you really don't know, uh, and obviously this is an eModels show, eModels.co.uk. Uh, if, if you're not sure, give the guys at eModel a quick call or drop them an email and just tell them that you're a beginner and what your budget is they won't try and stiff you they won't try and sell you the most expensive if you give them a budget of 300 quid they might say well get if you're starting out get this one and this one 150 there you go done they won't try and just stiff you out of every penny you've got but all they need to know is you know what you're looking for and what you're looking for is um you know a quiet compressor or you if you're not bothered about volume just say if it needs to be quiet say i need a quiet compressor you want a compressor with a tank and a gravity fed dual gravity fed dual action airbrush if you just explain to them, say, I live in an apartment, I live in a flat, and I've got neighbours on either side, so I can't be spraying late at night and making loads of noise, they'll be able to, you know, tweak it for you. Right, we've got the case brew out. What do we need? We need all the K parts now. We need K38. I'm right to, mm, there's quite a lot of parts here. K38. I can smell lemon drops. I think mum's in the sweet jar again. 738. Mama Fox and her sweets. Now, see this piece here. Got these collection points in the middle and at the ends. I'm going to take the middle pieces off first. And if you just heard that, I apologize. That was my belly making rumbly noises because I was thinking about KFC. I mean, I'm always thinking about KFC, don't get me wrong. Okay. Now, again, I would. Oops. I wouldn't normally recommend using expensive nippers for this kind of task, but I don't really have a choice because those will break otherwise. These two here. Now I've separated from there. I can use the big ones on this bit. Hopefully. It's bending. It's bending. I don't like that. It's flexing somewhere. No, I don't like that. Let's go with the expensive ones then. You've got to keep an eye on these things as they move. There we go. That's off. You can't always risk it for a biscuit. Just go slowly. And you'll be fine when you're getting nippers you really want to get a selection you don't just want one pair of nippers that will do everything these are brilliant you can't get god hands don't even try but you know expensive really fine detail ones are brilliant but they're useless for cutting big things off big sprues if i use this on a warhammer kit to get off the sprit be dead by the end of the day and um, so you want a selection you want some heavy duty ones and some very fine detail nippers as well uh where are we so it's k38 and we have a K36 and 59, 36, uh, which will be over there somewhere. 
it's tiny. I can use my little nippers on that. Yeah, these little actually, connection points on the trees, they're actually really small, so it's probably not such a big risk using my, my fine nippers. Uh, 36, 59. 95. I don't even know if that's how you say 59 in German. Five and nine zig. Come for 90, is that how you say 59? I don't know, I'm making it up in my brain. I guess a zig is the official thing that you add on, say it's a 10. I don't know. K39, K60, so K39 is... Ooh, there's, a, there's an axle from a truck. K39. <laughs> Yeah, I, I spot things as we go along. Oops, knocking the camera. I do apologise. K39. Uh, Nick Paul is constantly putting emodels. Emodels.co.uk for emodel making needs. Mayhem says, yes, always gravity. Open my eyes and the siphon has been well tossed. Yes, uh, uh, if you're getting an airbrush, especially if you're a beginner, if you get an airbrush, it must be gravity fed and it must be dual action. Again, if you're a beginner, you want to make yourself have the easiest journey possible. Um, gravity fed, write this down with words on paper. Gravity fed cup on top and um, dual action. So you can control air and paint separately. Right, need part number 60. Uh, if you go for one, if you go for a, a side feed, which is the cup at the side, um, the only downside with those is they're a pain in the butt to clean out. And when you're just starting out, the last thing you want to know or do is take your airbrush apart too much because you want to know what you're doing. You'll panic. 61 and 41. So side feed, they work fine. They're just a pain in the bum to clean. And they're fiddly and, and awkward. Um... And you have to flush them out more to do a colour change. Suction feed or siphon feed, that's where the, bot the, the the paint is in a jar underneath the airbrush. They are the worst kind of airbrush. Uh, when you see people, professionals using them, it's because they need to just slap paint on something quick without giving it a thought. 41 I need. Have I just done 41? No, not yet. Uh, suction feed or siphon feed. They require higher pressures because they've got to pull the paint up through the tube into the airbrush. Whereas gravity feed, gravity does the work for you. It pulls the paint down. Your airbrush, let me get this airbrush back. Gravity feed, cup on top. Air comes up through here. Whoop, whoop. That way, the air going past this hole where the paint is, sucks it out and gravity pulls it down. So the air and the gravity are doing the work for you, making the paint come out that way. Um, these can work at lower pressures because they're not having to suck paint up. If you've got a, a siphon, a suction feed, a siphon feed, which is the paint jar down here, you've got to have a higher pressure so that the air coming up can run past here and suck the paint up. You've got to have a, the air traveling so fast past the, 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 uh, the opening where the paint tube is that it pulls that paint up. Uh, and that's why siphon ones, you can't run them at low pressures. Like yeah, I can I can spray things through this at 12 psi, which a siphon feed wouldn't even get paint in the spray for that. But also they're a pain in the bum. If I want to change colour on this, all I do is I've been spraying unless I'm spraying red. La 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 la. Tip the excess paint out. Get some thinners or cleaner in there. Run it through a couple of times. Within a minute, you know, get a baby wipe in there. Within within 35 seconds to a minute, I've cleaned out all the paint. I can put more paint in. I can run it out get any of the mixed red and yellow paint in, for example, and then before I know it, I've got yellow paint coming out where I had red before. With the suction or the siphon feed, you've got to take that pot of paint, put it to one side, get a completely different pot of paint, put it there, get a completely different pot with just cleaners or thinners in it, connect that, run the thinners through and clean it out properly, make sure there's no of the previous paint coming out, take off your pot of thinners, get your pot of paint, plug that in, then you can spray. So you need three pots and then you've got to of course when you're finished if you want to have if you're going to spray with say five different colors you need to have five different pots or be prepared to if you've only got one pot and you want to spray some red and then you think right i need to paint yellow you've got to stop what you're doing 
take that pot off, clean it, clean the pot out, fill it with thinners, put the thinners on, clean the airbrush out, take the pot off, clean it out of thinners again, put the new paint in, and yeah, it, don't get suction feed or siphon feed. They're just, it's, no. I know you see Adam Savage using them in his, in his, in his workshop and every now and then, but you know what he's got some hard old knacker ones that he just runs cellulose thinners through bit of red done and he's just blasting it through and that's fine if you know what you're doing you can probably use them to good effect but just don't i i learned to I, well my first airbrushing experience was siphon feed uh, crappy siphon feed brushes and rattle cans that i got from halfords don't don't use rattle cans either of air yeah worst thing ever worst thing ever so yes if you're learning to airbrush, don't make life hard for yourself. Uh, I've done 41. I think I've done 41. Yep. Yeah. Uh, is that all the K parts for now? That is all the K parts for the most. I'll put this back in its little protective sleeve. I don't. The only advantage that siphon feed brushes have over gravity and side feed is they have a big pot of paint which holds more paint. You've got a greater reservoir of paint. If you're painting a six foot long, you know remote control boat then yeah you might get away with the siphon feed one because it's got a big jar of paint that's going to hold like about half a litre of paint in it that's probably a good idea if you're painting something like this or you know something small you you're giving yourself an extra 20 minutes cleanup time and the biggest pain of all of course is taking off that pot of paint cleaning it out putting it back on again because eventually it gets jammed up you get paint everywhere it's just, no just don't bother <sighs> Siphon airbrushes are frankly stupid, says Paul. I was a dingus for having a siphon feed, says Model Maker Mayhem, but my Mustang was painted with it. Haha. <laughs> 59 in German is um, is Neun und Funtzig. I got it wrong. I said Fun Fun Neunzig. It's Neun und Funtzig. Neun und I didn't know the, the thing came before the other thing. Okay. Neun und Funtzig. So like 56 would be. Uh, okay, that yeah, makes sense. I know now. I thought it was the decimal first and then the... Cool. Uh, 59, 50, 50. Here come the sonner, says Model Making Mayhem. You spell it here wrong. Or just have five airbrushes. Don't some gravity feeds have options for a 50ml cup, says Beyblade Master. Yeah, some of them do have... Um, some of them you can get big fat cups. And if you if you... If you're a professional spray booth worker, like if you're in a body shop and stuff like that, and you've got an actual spray gun, like the DeVilbis ones and things like that, they do have big cups, and you can get a big cup to go on the top, and it looks like a paintball gun. Uh, you can't really, I don't think you can get them for that this kind of airbrush, because they're not designed for that big, but you can get ones where they have a completely vertical, usually a, a nozzle there, and you can get big cups that go on the top. There's nothing wrong with that. That's Again, that's if you've got high volume, but, you know, if you're... If you're looking at that, if you in this situation where you need a big cup of paint that big, you're probably painting something massive like a remote control boat or a car or something. In which case, then you'd probably go for a spray gun, not an airbrush. If I if I was regularly painting six foot long ship keels, like Ted used to make his boats and stuff, I'd probably get a spray gun because then you're getting massive coverage quickly. An airbrush would be just like trying to colour it in with a pencil. You'd be like, oh, it's taking forever. Whereas a spray gun's like, there you go. Scary though, spray guns are not cheap. Not cheap at all. We used to work in detailing, and some of those spray guns are like hundreds of pounds. Wow. But the good thing with a, with a gravity fed, like I say, colour changes, you just tip out the excess paint, flush some cleaner through to make sure there's none of the original paint going through, and then just put the new paint in. There's no cleaning out of cups or anything like that. You don't need to. It's just a lot easier. It makes your life so much easier. But it's like all things. There's no point hobbling yourself when you're trying to do something. I am a lazy gamer. No, that's not. That's wrong. That's a totally different YouTube channel. I am a lazy model maker. Um, doesn't mean I. Cut, I don't mean I cut corners. I don't mean I go. I can't be bothered painting that. I'll just spray it with a router cam. I mean. There's a lot of things in model making that have two different processes. The long drawn out process that takes a long time and is unnecessary, convoluted and complicated. 
or the quick way that often looks exactly the same but doesn't take like a week uh, and I am always the advocate of the quick way because the long complicated process is the kind of thing that makes non-modelers look at this hobby and think I could never do that because that looks so complicated you must have to have years of experience to understand how to do that and I'm sitting there going no if you, if you don't do that if you do this other thing that's actually a billion times easier and doesn't require a degree in chemistry it's done there you go like for example uh, I know people that have watched how to do paint chipping videos where they're using like chipping fluids and stuff like that and they're all like oh, I can't get it right it's just like you know it, it doesn't come off or I leave it on too long and nobody ever tells you how long to take it on for and I've put on too much it's too thick I can't get it right it's too complicated it's, it's a dark art I can't do it and I turn around to them and say why don't you just brush paint the chips on just paint little chips it there's no chemistry there's no complexity it's the simplest way of doing it you just paint the chips on the model you don't need to worry about chipping fluids and getting things done and the timing of things and i've said it to people and they'd be like i never thought of that and it's like yeah don't overthink things yes you can do it the stupidly complex way and requires all these different things and skills and abilities and timing and or you could just paint them on oh yeah there's always a way and as, as a naturally lazy person i'll always strive for the best possible results but i'll always try and find a, a better way not just an easier way but a better more efficient way of doing things and sometimes the established way of doing things is not the easiest or the best way of doing it and my aim is to is to you know lift that veil and say you've watched six videos about how to do this particular model making technique and you're completely confused because it's really complicated yeah you don't need to do any of that just paint just brush paint them just paint the chips on there you go that's just one example there's other things as well techniques like you know all these complicated techniques for doing like single you get a tank with a single piece track it's like a rubber like a tamiya thing with a rubber track and all these like complicated methods people have for putting those tracks on from the traditional you know heating up a screwdriver to melt the nubs to other things and bits and bobs it's like and ted would just say staple it literally staple the two halves together and make sure the staple is underneath the track guards where you can't see it's not lazy it does the job exactly it's perfectly acceptable and it's a lot less hassle there's a lot of things and i've forgotten what my original point was now but with airbrushing it's the same principle there's no point making things a lot more complicated than it needs to be and especially airbrushing which as we've always said has a really steep but very short learning curve unless you necessarily make it a longer learning curve by getting terrible equipment so always keep things as straightforward as they can as a friend of mine used to say if ever you've got a process that's fostering you kiss it what does that mean keep it simple stupid kiss it if ever you're struggling with something can it can it be kissed can you kiss it can you keep it simple is there a simpler way to do it doesn't mean cut corners it just means maybe this isn't the most efficient way to do it so always see if always ask yourself can i kiss it not in public outside obviously because then you get arrested but in, in in terms of you whatever you're doing the process you're doing can you kiss it can you keep it simple stupid like here i could be shaving this with the fire right now this little nub or i could just keep it simple and try and snip it off with the snippers always ask if you can kiss it everything every problem can be kissed every process can be kissed to a certain degree uh, and yeah i say it's not being lazy i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do a if i find a process that's more efficient but isn't as good in the end result then i'm not going to use that process unless i'm happy for the end result to be not as good like in terms of chipping yes sometimes using chipping fluids can give you much more convincing and realistic look especially when it comes to faded chips and things like that so there is an argument to be said spoken for that 
However, you might be happy with the effect that brushed paint chipping can give you. That might be absolutely fine for your purposes. You might only want a couple of little small chips here and there. You know, if you're doing, say, winter camouflage, then chipping fluid is probably the best bet because that gives you that kind of faded paint look as well as chips. If you're just doing, you know, chipping on a Japanese World War II Zero, then you can actually brush paint that. Or, you know, use salt method instead of, you know, the hairspray or the, the chipping fluid method. There's different things you can do. And obviously, sometimes the longer process is the better process, depending on the result you're looking for. But don't assume that's always the case. And sometimes the shorter process is not the worst process. It doesn't mean you're lazy. It just means you're being efficient. For me, in the build part of, this, of any project, I've said it a million times. I hate building. I love painting. I'm a, build, I'm a painter, not a builder. Uh, and if I can do anything to speed up the build process and get to the painting weathering process quicker, I will. Absolutely, you bet your bottom dollar. I'll still do the best I can. I'm not going to cut corners. I'm just making things more efficient. It's all about efficiencies. Right, is that a nub or is that part of the... I can't tell if that's a nub or if it's like a rivet in the middle of the thing that the thing's based on molded detail I'm not quite sure uh, I'll have a look at the uh, baby blaster says I guess I'll get oh hello Beyblade I guess I'll get into one of those harder and steam becks that have a 0.8 nozzle in the future because I got into ships lately <laughs> yeah harder and steam back are the luxury brand of steam back even or the luxury brand of airbrushes if you're a beginner, I wouldn't recommend a Harder and Steenbeck. Not because they're anything wrong with them, but because it's like learning to drive in a Ferrari. Yeah, you probably don't want to do that. You want to learn to drive in a Proton first, <laughs> then work your way up. Um, there, what I would say is, you know, if you know what you're doing, that's fine. Harder and Steenbeck is something to work towards. Because it's all about confidence. And like I said before, we never tell people to start their airbrushing adventure on expensive brushes. Because there's no guarantee when you start doing airbrushing that you're going to even enjoy it. You might do it for a bit and think, you know what, I prefer brush painting. This isn't for me. And if you've just spent 600 quid on an expensive compressor and airbrush, you're kind of screwed. You're a bit knackered. And, you know, then you get your better half looking at you funny because you that thing you, you, you spent all your money on that you don't want anymore. So that's why we always say start on the mid-range and get get your sea legs first. Get yourself comfortable with it. And when you're happy, then you can always work it. I've, been, I've, I've not yet felt the need to go up to anything like a hydrant steam bed because I'm quite happy with the Neo, Neo water I've got. But my airbrushing is kind of minute. I don't do it all the time, so I'm not trying to get any real complex type stuff going on. I will do eventually. Phil Lewis says, dropping off chat for now. We'll carry on watching on the big telly. Model Making Mayhem says, Big Telly! And Beck Storm says, Fox on the telly! Hang on, I've got to do it, because if I'm on the big telly, I've got to do it. Although the camera's a bit low down. Hang on. Hello, people on the big telly! Can you see my entire brain from there? Can you see my brain in the back of my eye? Hello. Big telly time! Oh, that made everything bend in the wrong direction. We have gone dizzy now. Woohoo! <sighs> Uh, remember folks if you want to ask me a question please for the love of dog ask me questions uh, but put your questions in big capital letters so they have a chance of standing out in the chat I'm sat here in the chat there I've got my visor on all I see through this visor on my iPad is blurs little black lines of blurredness on my iPad but ones that are in capital stand out so I know to lift my visor up and read it like I can see blur 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 big telly blur blur so yeah Put your questions and comments that you want me to see. Uh, where's that sticker I sent you, Fox? The big telly one. You didn't send me a st sticker. You sent me the you sent me the design for it. Uh, it's it's in in a folder. <laughs> Mayhem sent me some designs for um, for stickers, and I must upload them to the uh, store actually. Yeah, some awesome designs for stickers and things. I must upload them to the store so you can buy them and have them for yourself. Because it's been a long time since I've done any sticker giveaways. Because And it will be a long time before I do any more because I can't physically go to the post office. 
Uh, I actually have all the people that won stickers on my channel since last June are still waiting. Because I used to let it back up for five or six months to get a big selection and go all in, or go all at the same time and post everybody's stuff out. Unfortunately, the entire world caught fire. And that's not going to happen now forever until I can leave the house again. So, yeah, soz. Arnie impression, please. It's been a while. What do you want me to say as Arnie? What am I your performing monkey? In fact, just just to, just so you know, uh, I have actually recorded recently. I don't know if they're on there yet. I did actually recently record when you phone emodels dot co dot uk your one stop shop for emodel making needs. Uh, when you phone emodels, you often get an announcement saying, "You know, thanks for calling emodels." Blah blah blah. Press one, press two. I've just recorded some of those for uh, Pete, mate. I don't know if he's put them on the phone system yet, and I don't know which ones he's going to use, but one of them may or may not be a bit like Arnie. I'm not going to say any more than that. There might be a few of them may be a bit silly. A bit silly. Get to the chopper now, you fool. You came here in that thing. You're just, what was the word? I forgot the line. Oh, there. No. You came here in that thing. You're braver than I thought. We're going to play a fun game today. It's called Who is Your Daddy? What does he do? I'll give you a sneak peek. One of the one of the voice announcements is something along the line. I've got to remember now, but it's something along the lines of um, something like "Hello and thank you for calling me models that call that UK." And then it talks for a bit, and then it says, "I've got a fun game for you to play. It's why are you called? Well, why are you calling? And which button do you press?" <laughs> something like that. I, I, you have to don't start spamming the phone line. <laughs> Just James may be like. That's the fifth person that's called to find just what to listen to our voice message. He'll be like, Pete, mate, why is all these customers calling just to listen to the phone system? Who is your daddy? What does he do? The T-1000 would definitely try to reacquire you, dear. I would. I know, it's a stupid voice. Aren't you a little short for a T-800? And I, sometimes it works and sometimes I just I blow it and it doesn't work at all. I don't think I'm on form today. Do 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 do. I need to, I've got really sweaty hands at the minute. I don't quite know why. It's really, really, really warm in here. I had plans tonight for a hangout with some peeps to do some stuff, but if it carries on getting warm in here like this, it might not be happening. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. I already got to airbrushing and it's quite fun. I just need a better respirator first because I love the local brand of hobby lacquers. It just sucks. The three M ones went from twenty five to thirty bucks to sixty bucks. Yeah. I mean, however, having said that, if you've got like a if you've got like a seven half thousand or seven thousand series half face respirator, if you've got one of these, uh, if you've got one of these puppies, one of them's. These cartridges with the dust filter as well, they could last you months. These can actually be on there for months, um, even for lacquers. I can get six months out of a set of filters. I mean, the golden rule, the golden rule with the filters is um, they're absolutely fine until you start to taste or smell the paint through the mask. And that means either... You're a bloke with a fluffy beard and it's not making a proper seal, in which case you have to think about getting rid of the beard or trimming it down. Um, or the filters are giving up the ghost and you can start to taste it. And that's why you need to swap your filters out. I tend to buy my filters in packs of like two packs of two. So it's like I get four filters and those four filters will last me a good year and a half. Uh, they do have a shelf life, though. Obviously, if you've got a pack of filters on open, then you, it's five years later and you open them up, they're probably not going to work. So, yeah, they are expensive, but once you've got a set of filters, they're going to last you a good good six months at least. I mean, if, if you're a body shop, when we used to do stuff in body shops, they, they'd last us months. And that's in a proper hardcore body shop. Uh, Carl Winch put a super chat through. Thank you very much, Carl. That's very kind of you. 
uh, 20 pounds. He says, hi again, folks. Hi, Carl. We love Carl because Carl does super chats. That's what a super chat looks like. Uh, I laid down a coat of white UMP primer, then a layer of lacquer. It resulted in a furry kind of layer. I tried to cover it over with another UMP layer. However, it will not take the furry areas. Any advice? Uh, how did you lay the UMP primer down? Was it a mist coat and then a thicker coat? And then how did you layer the lacquer down? Was that a very light misty coat or was it like a big thick coat all in one go? And how long did you leave between them? Oops, locking the camera again. If you're laying, if you're airbrushing lacquers on top of acrylic primers, it can be all right as long as you, you know, you're, you're putting down, you're building up your lacquers in very fine misty coats because then the uh, the lacquer paint will be almost dry when it hits the model, so it's not going to really do much damage to the to the fully cured and dried acrylic primer because it's fully cured and dried. However, you probably want to leave your acrylic primer base for 24 hours to fully cure off before you start putting anything else on it. If you're spraying acrylics on top of acrylic primer, then 20, you know, an hour is fine. If you're spraying lacquers like that, because I've sprayed lacquer paints on top of acrylic primers, as long as the acrylic primer is fully cured and your lacquer paint is not wet when it lands, if it's not like dripping wet, build up in mist coats, it should be fine. I don't know what the furry bit is though. Uh, I need to know exactly how you applied them. Beckstorm also says, did you shake the ever living bejesus out of the paints first? That's the other thing, of course. Was the, What did the primer look like when it was just primer? You don't need to do another super chat, by the way, just answering the normal. I don't want to spend a lot of money just to get the answers, but um, you know what? If I was doing that, it would basically be, here's how I'd do it. Uh, let's see, where are we? I haven't got. Let's pretend that. No, that's not. Yeah, let's pretend that's UMP primer, like colour primer. I've got some. I don't know what I've got. I know what I've got. No, it's one shot. Oh, never mind. Okay, here's how we do it one shot primer and somewhere. I haven't got any right here, but let's pretend, let's pretend that that is a lack of paint, okay? What I would do is, model part. First coat, pretend this is ammo prime, uh, UMP primer. First coat, very light mist coat. So I go in, very light mist coat, almost, not almost invisible, but it's very faint. You can see completely through it. It's just a, a dusting. Uh, and that's to um, key the surface and give a, a texture for the next layer to adhere to. So very light, misty, misty, very, very delicate key coat. Then with the airbrush, uh, just, it's actually, that's your primer coat. Then as soon as you've done that, air only, which on a trigger brush is that far on the brush and no more, that's just air. Or on a button brush is just go push down for the air but not pull back for the paint and just blast it with the air for 20 30 seconds just to flash it off your misty coat and then go straight in with your second coat go slower put more of the primer on uh, make sure it's a nice flat even coat you can with the ump and the ammo stuff you can go a bit crazy uh, and then again air for 20 30 seconds just to flash it off so there's no shiny bits left so it looks dry and then if you need to you can do the same again with a, th a second coat a third coat now you're just making sure it looks dry so that would be that let's say that was primed if i was doing that lacquer paint on top i would then put that away for 24 hours i come back the next day i get me lacquer paint and what i would do i've done this with the mr metal color buffer balls same principle first coat very light misty key coat almost transparent almost invisible it's just like a dusting and again, that's just to give a slightly tacky surface for the next coat to adhere to. Sounds weird because you've got primer under there, but trust me. Uh, air that off for 20, 30 seconds. Then your first coat, again, heavier coat. And just going, but with the lack of paints or any paints after that, you don't want a big, thick, fat, heavy coat. You want not as, not as light as the first paint coat, not quite a misty key coat, but you want it to be still a light mist coat. And then and air, air for 20, 30 seconds and another light mist coat. Whenever you're painting paints of any kind, don't just go with the paint. No, always build them up in thin, misty coats and build the colour up slowly. That way, especially with lacquers, that means that when you're spraying that paint on, 
do it from a bit of a distance as well. When you're spraying that paint on, it's more aerosolized. It's hitting, it's more, it's drier when it hits the surface and that gives it less chance to react with the acrylic primers. If I got like lack, lack of paint and went splurge all over the acrylic primer, so it's dripping off, that lack of paint is going to eat into the primers and just mess it all up. But if, you, if you're doing it in misty light coats, it, it's too dry. It's not flowing. It's not liquidy. It's not going to react as much. It'll also be faster to dry as well. So it's kind of tricky and it does take practice. Other thing to keep in mind, uh, this also sounds a bit weird, but white primers are always a pain in the bum. White primers suffer from the same problem that white paints have, in which is, is in that they are a pain in the backside. Uh, white primers can often look, excuse me a second. White primers can often look powdery and fluffy and gritty and that's purely because of the pigments used to make them white same with paints they always come out chalky and rough and powdery uh model maker mayhem says flugenschreider or flugenschadul Uh, Beyblade Master says, that's a problem. I have a generic respirator and just when I was going to get one, a volcano erupted and COVID followed and a month after, so stocks ran out and prices doubled. Yeah, okay, I can't. I, I didn't figure in the volcano bit. Uh, my instinct is the lacquer can I reactivate the primer coat. How long did you wait between spray layers? That's the other possibility. Uh, has he replied yet? Do put in the chat what... Uh, he's not replied yet. Yeah, how long did you leave between the primer and the uh, lacquer? And... And my suspicion is the primer wasn't fully cured and when it's still curing it's still reacting chemically or uh, you put the lacquer on too thick and it reactivated that primer perhaps a little bit because even a fully cured lac uh, acrylic coat primer if the lacquer paint is too liquidy it's going to react normally you wouldn't put lacquers on top of i would never paint a model with if i was brush painting i'd never paint uh, lacquer paints on top of an acrylic primer if I'm brush painting because it's a liquid it's still curing it's chemically reacting it's gonna it's chemically hot it's gonna react with that acrylic primer uh, but when you're airbrushing it's a bit different you, you're aerosolizing it it can be a lot less liquidy and hot and reactive so it can be okay ultimately at the end of the day I mean the best thing to do is to put you know lacquer paints on top of a lacquer primer try and avoid acrylic primers but as long as you're careful with acrylic primers and, and lacquers on top of your airbrushing, it can be all right, but you want to be really careful. <sighs> do, 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 do. Uh, Carl, if you want to, I can't post a link here, I haven't now. Uh, I do have a, I do have a group called on Facebook called the Model Makers Boom Hut. If one of the mods could, have, could be really kind and post a link for me, because people in chat can't post links. Um, it's called the Model Makers Boom Hut. There's about 4,000 people in there. If you post up some pictures or even you know, just, just ask the question in there, uh, everybody would be able, more than happy to give you some advice on that. Because we really need to kind of see what you've got, to be honest, to, to know exactly what's going on or to have a better idea. It sounds like uh, the, the acrylic wasn't fully cured. I mean, I know I said last night you, you you can put lacquers on acrylics and you can when you're airbrushing. It's just, you should always be careful. And it's the kind of thing you should always test first. So I've never brush paint lacquers on top of acrylics. That's asking for trouble, but airbrushing. I've put, you know, lacquer, I've, that Mr. Metal Buffable, the frame of my 160 scale strike Gundam is uh, UMP primer with Mr. Metal Buffable paint on top. And it's absolutely fine. Uh, but yeah, feel, do feel free to go and join the Model Makers Boom if one of the mods can post a link up. There you go, Gross, gross Models, just, just put a link, a link up too. Uh, okay, he's done another one. Uh, thank you. You don't have to do a super chat every time though, Carl, don't worry. I know, I'm really grateful that you do, but I don't want you spending a fortune. I put a mist coat down first, about half hour rest, then another thicker layer. It left about four hours and then put down quite a thick layer, like a layer. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. The application of the primer is fine. UMP primers are really forgiving. You can black them on, nobody cares, and it will look fantastic. Four hours between that and the lacquer, it's not long enough. You want at least 24 hours between that and the lacquer. And then the thick layer of lacquer on the top, yeah, that's where you want the mist coat, and then build up the colour misty. If you're putting on a lick, if it's still liquidy and viscous and flowy, that's a problem. So, yeah, <laughs> no worries, Carl. I just didn't want you spending £20 every time to ask a question. Um, 
yeah, I think that's the problem. Don't panic though. If you're in the UK, I can tell you exactly how you can get that paint off there. If you want to, if you want to start again, get everything stripped off. If you're in the UK or if you're in your country where you can get that. Brown Dettol does the job perfect. Takes off any paint. There you go. Done. Soak your pieces or parts in a, in a jar or jug of brown Dettol. It can take anywhere from a couple of hours to overnight. It smells lovely. Uh, if you're my age, all you'll think about is 1970s school corridors where little Timmy threw up. Uh, and I'll get it off. Uh, Ian Thompson says, could it be salvaged with a wet sanding? It depends. If it was something like that, you can't wet sand. You, you couldn't. If it's something flat, you could sand it. Um, but you've still got the idea of activated lacquers and stuff on there. If you can strip the paint off and start again, it's just as easy. May as well. Um, yeah, get yourself some Dettol. That's a good stripper. If you're in the UK. Uh, <laughs> Chris at Gross Model says about joining the Boom Hut. If you want to put your application to join on a £20 note. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it was a simple flat piece, if it was like something like this, then yeah, you could sand. If it was doing it, you could just sand it down. You could sand it all away and get it nice and flat and just reprime it and start again. But if it's something like that, you, you couldn't. You'd, yeah, you couldn't do that. Depends what it is. Uh, if you are doing Dettol, handy tip, if I put the, if this was painted and I put that in a Dettol bath, uh, put it in Dettol, leave it for a few hours. Uh, Dettol will be a lot less harmful than a lot of paint strippers, basically. Put it in for a few hours, get yourself an old toothbrush and just very gently after a few hours, get your hand in there and just scrub it. See if it's, you'll see the paint start to come off on the primer. Uh, if it's, if there's still stuff left on there, don't worry, don't worry about it, put it back in again, come back a couple of hours later and just every now and then give it a try. Eventually, you'll have scrubbed off all the paint. There'll be little tiny bits left and nothing you need to worry about. Uh, then you can just basically take it over to your tap, rinse it off, and you're good to go. One advice is, though, don't ever get water on it while it's still got Dettol and paint on it. Because if you add water to Dettol and paint, you get a gunk that's just horrible and you can't get off. So get it in the Dettol, keep it in the Dettol, wear some gloves, scrub it with the toothbrush, put it back in the Dettol, scrub it with the toothbrush. As soon as you've got all the paint off and you're happy you're not going to get any more off, then you can take it over to the tap and rinse it thoroughly. Just make sure there's no paint or primer left on it. Don't get it wet while it's got primer and paint still on it, because that would be a nightmare. Uh... Doo -doo. Ian Thompson says temperature and weather can affect it too. Yes, if it's particularly humid, uh, and uh, then that's going to affect your drying times and curing times. Like as cure quite quickly. Uh, Ian Tom says, Fox, you've got no chance of getting Dettol at the moment. For some strange reason, the shelves keep getting emptied. Methylated spirits are just as effective. Yeah, but they're more stinky. Uh, and as, as e-models don't sell Dettol, I would just say go on Amazon and get some Dettol. <laughs> I got a bottle for like two quid. Uh, but yeah, if you can get meths, meths would be all right. The only problem is with meths. Meths, if it was a Bandai kit, you might not have any parts left. Dettol. You'd probably be all right. Yeah. Do a test piece first. Though. Whatever you decide to clean it with, get a bit of sprue, put it in there overnight, bring it out. And if it's dissolved away, then you don't want to use that to clean it. <sighs> Model making mayhem says, meth, not even once. Wait. Beckstorm says 99% IPA works well too. It does, but again, not on that plastic, it wouldn't. You would have nothing left. I know IPA is one of the ingredients in Dettol, but for some reason it does seem to be quite gentle with uh, with plastics. I don't quite know why. Uh, but as with anything, before you dump your expensive, potentially expensive or hard work into a bath of Dettol or any cleaning fluid of any kind, just test it. The one thing I know can strip Mecky painting off Bandai kits is oven pride oven cleaner. It doesn't damage the plastic, but that's for Mecky painting. I don't know how it works with paint. Yeah, also, it's horribly, horribly toxic. Yeah, but let us know how you get on. I suspect there, as I say, it's not had long enough to cure the primer and you've gone straight in with a heavy coat of the lacquer. Which you can do with lacquers, it's fine because it will self-level wonderfully. But if it's on top of a lacquer coat, that's not a problem. If it's on top of an acrylic coat, that is a problem, potentially. I've got, I forgot that mould line, didn't I? Who am I, UK1? Afternoon, all and Foxy. Welcome. 
Is it a mold line I forgot to get rid of? Yeah, so when you if you are airbrushing lacquers on top of acrylic primers, just yeah, that's why you have to be super careful. And take your time. In an ideal world, you wouldn't ever put a lacquer on top of any acrylic of any kind. Even airbrushing. In an ideal world. To be extra safe, if you're using a if you're using lacquer paints, use a lacquer primer. Like to me, a rattle cam primer is a lacquer primer. But a rattle cam primers tend to be a uh, tend to be lacquers anyway. But there's always the slight chance. But if you're brush painting, never ever ever put lacquer on top of anything that isn't lacquer, basically. Airbrushing, you have the advantage, but of, of aerosolization, but your mileage may vary. Your mileage may vary. Make sure it's the brown Dettol though, I think the other ones might result in disaster. Uh, I tried a different Dettol and it didn't result in disaster, it just smelled nice and no paint came off. So yeah, just don't waste your money, on it's just the brown Dettol. I'll have a word with Pete, mate, and ask him to start st stocking Dettol. <laughs> Pete, start stocking Dettol, especially for the Americans. We love it. Uh, I did actually suggest to Pete, mate, once uh, that they start stocking Pledge. You know, pledge two times more shine. All arguments about it aside, it's still a product that many model makers like to use, and it's hard to find sometimes. So I did say to Pete Mate once, you should start stocking pledge, and they were gonna, but they couldn't they couldn't find any. <laughs> so yes. So I might say, if you're watching this, Pete Mate, start stocking brown dettol. Buy a whole mess of it. Market it as a paint stripper for plastic parts. Although I, I, I've never actually used it on Bandai plastic, so I'm not 100% sure. I have to do some testing on that to be sure for that. Mm, thanks, team, says EC Idaho. You're welcome. I don't know what we did, but thank you very much. Nom, 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 Beck Storm says two times more shine. Doodle 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 Ian Thompson says, Fox, or go to your Amazon page. I do have an Amazon store, but it's on videos on my channel. Uh, I don't like to advertise that, because obviously, for obvious reasons, not here anyway. I think that one's nice and clear. I think I've done this one. I think I've done that about three times now. I've just not been paying attention. Uh, this is going to go that way. So it's this top edge. Top edge. There you go, Carl approved in the hut. Welcome to the boom hut, buddy. Make sure to read the rules. Uh, but yes, it's a nice friendly group. It's designed basically as a supportive friend space, friendly space for people to get feedback on their works, to get advice. We don't allow snarkiness or bitchiness or anything like that. So you'd be nice and safe in there. Wheaton's Raw. Well, Wheaton's Law applies, obviously, is the basic rule. But yeah, just feel free. Feel free to ask any question you want. Everybody in there is nice and shiny. They'll help you out. I don't know what we're doing the bottom bit for. Now you see why I like using this removal tool for, for mold lines. Is because that gives me a nice smooth surface that a knife wouldn't. A knife would put loads of scratches and stuff in there. That's nice and smooth. Minimal sanding required. Doodle do 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 do. Oops. I need my knife. Oh, I need the knife. Yes, Paul at Team Inept explains the basic will, uh, the Wheaton's Law rule. And Chris says somehow Paul is still a member. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Paul seems to be immune from all the rules, but that's just because of Paul. A uh, little bit of nub in there. Um, what time are we on? Oh, it's uh, half three. I can hear the pigeons outside in the garden fighting each other. They are idiots. Wood pigeons. We seem to have a family of wood pigeons that's lived round our way for years, and they're always in our garden. It's fine. I quite like them. They're just dumb as anything. Dumb as a bag of hammers. But in a kind of adorable way. Mm 
but watching them is frustrating. Watching wood pigeons on a feeder is frustrating because <sighs> imagine if I, you're sat in a chair at one end of the room and I put a plate of food on the table about six feet away. Imagine you put that food down for someone and then they spend 10 minutes looking around the room, planning their planning the movements, and then eventually they kind of go, and then they sit down eating. It's so frustrating because they'll, they'll land on the bird, they'll, they'll be sat on something looking at the bird feeder and you can see them looking at the food on the feeder and they're doing all the tactical thing. You think they're doing all the tactical, I could go over there, but I need to make sure there's nobody over there. And if I go that way, you think they're being tactical, but they're not, they're just dumb. It takes them 10 minutes to make a decision and it's like, oh, just, oh. They can be frustrating. Uh, Beck Storm says, don't you just wish they would all get along and eat instead of one of them chasing everyone around the garden? Yeah, they do. Like one of them will land on it and start feeding and the rest will just start slap fighting. I'd actually recorded once a uh, video of, I've not got all the parts, have I? Have I? No, I've not got all the parts yet. Video of pigeons from it and they're all like slap fighting each other. It was quite hilarious. I need L sprue. Where's my L sprue? L, that's, oh, it's over here, isn't it? Uh, which sprue? L. One. L1. L1. L Ted. L113. And just that one single part. Okay. I think. One part. Okay. L113. Which is this, is this tiny little molecule here. Is the part I need. Okay. It's the part I need. Yeah, they're funny to watch. Which look like now? Oh, I see. There we go. If you're doing this kit L13, it's got a little flange at the back that you do not cut off. Little flangey bit there. Don't cut that bit off. It really looks like just part of the sprue. You think it's part of the gate, but it's not. Yeah, all the neighbours are cutting their grass, or they were earlier, so they've all stopped now. I haven't got the noise, but I can smell the lovely cut grass smells. It's fantastic. Uh, that doesn't need any clean up because it's so small. It's tiny. Can't stand the sound of wood pigeons. It's like they were at the back of the queue when songs were dished out. Yeah, you get used to them after a while though. I mean, they're not as bad as magpies. Magpies are even less delicate and pretty, but I do like magpies. Magpies are awesome though. Magpies have got the smarts. Uh, it's actually believed that magpies may actually be this most intelligent of all birds. And also, did you know that magpies in Europe, the European magpie, uh, it has a Pikachu, it has a, a Pokemon name. I didn't realise, but the European magpie's Latin name is Pika Pika. Pika Pika. Look at that, that's awesome. Let's see what greebles we've got in here. Uh, we have, locking the camera, we have uh, engine block of some sort. Uh, another engine block from the side of it, like that Porsche Carrera engine block again, but from the side. Engine block with some exhaust manifolds uh, of something, maybe a tank. Uh, we have, what else can I see on here that I can recognise? Nothing else is standing out. There's probably the tiny details that I might recognise if I, if I looked carefully enough. I can confirm I have found a universal greeble or universal greebly, uh, which I shall try and pull up to the camera. If you if you know what a universal greeble is, you'll know the legend of it. It is that little thing there is a universal greeble. And now I'm trying to hold it up and not move my hand. It's basically a circular, a circular thing with four little circles on either side. That is the that is the legendary universal greeble or greebly. I know you probably can't see it. Hey, I work with what I've got. There we go. So that's, that's the first time I spotted that. The universal greebly. Yay! I remember Adam Savage going on about it for ages, but he never actually showed what it looked like. So I had to go and research it and find like, Ah, that's the oh there you go. It is off a Oh god, it's a rail gun. I can't remember which one it is now. There's a famous old rail gun kit. Uh, which it was off of. I can't remember which rail gun kit it was. I, re I can't recall. Zoom and enhance. 
Blade Runner style. Pull back. Do, 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 do. People are talking about London. Uh, not sure where the conversation's gone there. Uh, next we have K38, which was that one little tiny fiddly one, I think. Little tiny fiddly chap here. Which is this way around. Now there are a little bit of nibules on these on some of these pipes, little nibular bits. And they look like if it was a Ravel kit or an Airfix kit, they look like bits of egregious flash, but they're not. They're actually meant little like little tiny they're all supposed to be like little tiny tiny pipes that stick out every now and then. So just be careful if you're doing this kit. Sometimes little bits that stick out on the pipes are actually meant to be there. Uh, this needs to go which way does this need to go? This needs to go that way. Like that, you see? Pops in there. Pop. Goes in there. Carefully. <laughs> that goes in there. Carefully, he said again. Hoping it actually came true this time. There we go. Boom. Roger, pushing down now, sir. There we go, a little bit of glow. Graham M's back again for the finale. Hello, buddy. Welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so going back to that thing with the primer, I, I think the primer wasn't on long. Uh, the primer didn't get long enough to cure, and the lacquer was too thickly applied. Always do mist coats. Always build colour up. I'd rather, it's like brush painting, I would rather spray 10 thin misty coats to get uh, a solid colour coat than one thick coat that might run and dribble and obscure all the details. Always better. You also get a smoother finish. If I if I painted that with one quick coat of whatever colour I'm using, it will probably look terrible. If I do lots and lots and lots and lots, like 10 or 15 thin mist coats, eventually it'll be opaque, it'll cover it all completely, and... And it'll be smooth as a baby's butt without being shiny. Obviously, it'll be like a proper matte coat. Unless you mean it's a matte paint. Uh, we need... I totally didn't stick some bits on that bit, did I? First. Uh, I need to do those bits. I totally didn't do those. Let's get them bits on. Let's get it on. This needs to go here. Like that, we'll see. Tweezer time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Team says, there are red kites and there's little green parakeets around here. It's awesome. Well, you get you get wild parakeets around down south in London area. Wow, we don't get them. So that'd be cool, except when they have flocks of thousands. Bit of egregious flash is a folk band, isn't it? I think it was like a, a prog rock band that was modelled after Yes. Oh, flipping heck! I think it was one of them prog rock bands modelled themselves after Yes. Show my age now, you see. That's going to be not working, is it? This one's going to be a challenge now. I can see this. Get into, there we go. There, see how much better it is when you do what I want you to do. Uh, thank you. Uh, K36, which is another tiny piece. Looks like an MP40, but it's probably part of an exhaust system off a car or truck. It looks like the muffler on an exhaust with... Yeah, it looks like an exhaust muffler of some sort. Perhaps. Yep, it's good. Yes, we do get them. We're a subcolony of the ones that escaped to Richmond's Park or wherever it was. Cool. I kind of, I'm kind of in the mindset that it would be both cool and the worst thing ever if the UK suddenly got a colony of um, raccoons. Because it'd be cool, but also the worst thing ever. I know Germany gets them and they're overrun with them. They're like, oh dear lord, kill all the raccoons. But you know what? It would be kind of fun. Except we'd all have to have raccoon proof. I know all about them because my brother lives in the US. So yeah, I know what they're like. I know all the problems with raccoons. But it... Oops, hello. Where did that go? It would also be funny. Cool. Uh, K59 needs to go... There you say, oh, I say, there's a little hole here. I say, mm 
Get in the hole. Yes. Lovely. Thank you very much. You beauty. I should have done those three bits at first, rather. Paul says raccoons. Hell no. I think it'd be like I say, it'd be the worst thing ever because I know it's a nightmare. I know they only, but at the same time, it would be cool to actually just have raccoons. Also, it wouldn't be cool. I know it wouldn't be cool. I'm not that stupid. I'm fairly surprised we don't actually have them in this country because I'm fairly sure that people have had raccoons as pets for years. Uh, Beck Storm says about the squirrel obstacle course. Is that the, the NASA engineer? I've watched it. Uh, are those like foxes with rubber masks, the raccoons? Yeah, they're like me. They're kind of fat with rubber masks. <laughs> Uh, right, K39 is this one here. I do apologise, I keep knocking the camera, but the camera's right there. It doesn't really help you, but it's right at my head level where my visor is. Yes, I watched that squirrel obstacle course, and the first thing I thought was they could easily jump to, like the first thing where they jump straight onto that first one, I thought they could jump onto any of these from any of any of them. And there's no reason for them to do any of the obstacle course, because they could easily jump from one bit to the other. So I was quite surprised that they continued to do the obstacle course. It was really weird. Right, this one needs to go into one of these four little holes in this engine block here. Now it specifically calls out, it goes into the second hole along that one, not any of the others. So, and it also says, remember, bunny ears, pay attention, the long bit is there. So it needs to be that way around, like that. Nope, that way around. That way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My wife was allowed to have a pet raccoon when she was a kid. She'd cruelly give it sugar cubes and watch it get confused when the raccoon would try to wash them in water. <laughs> yeah, that's cruel. Yeah, I mean, there are people have had pet raccoons in the UK, so it, it wouldn't surprise me if some of them had escaped and we actually had a very small, wild population of raccoons. Because, you know, they introduced them to Germany and now Germany just hates the fact they've got raccoons. They're just like, oh... Doodly doodly. I told her she was an awful person for having done this to a poor raccoon. That's pretty dark. How old was she? Asks Ian Thompson. K thirty nine, K sixty. Now they are padding the instructions out a bit here because they're kind of doing this bit. Now this bit. Now that bit. Is, yeah, the little bit of instruction padding here. I think just a little bit. Right, K60 is that one, and it needs to go thusly, that way around. We get foxes every night, sometimes they hang around during the day. Yeah, we have a population of foxes around here. We, they used to live, we had a population that used to live in, under our garden shed for a while. Uh, that's the way around. Is that the right way? Wait, hang on. That's not... It's not even the right part. Make sure you've got the right parts, folks. And there we go. K60. That goes in this second. It goes a third along hole and this hole down here. These all thread through the that plate at the top now. Yeah, we had a family that used to live under our garden shed. Uh, and I never saw them during the day. Mum Fox says she went out one day and it was just sat, she was putting some washing out and she was just sat on the lawn sunning itself. I've seen them out at night. I saw... I've said the story before, but I was sat upstairs. I was much younger. I was in my bedroom, uh, which backs onto the back garden. And I was playing a video game. I was probably playing, I had an original PlayStation. I was probably playing a game or something. And I could hear this noise that was dead loud. And when I turned everything off, I realised it was coming from the garden. And it turned out it was the little baby. It was the, it was the little cubs, fox cubs, underneath the garden shed, like at the other end of the garden, doing their little noises. But as soon as the vixen appeared, they just stopped. So I went and sat outside in the dark and listened out for them. And uh, the vixen came over the fence. It didn't, didn't, wasn't bothered by me being there, to be honest. Was it really fast? That's going to go there. Slide, slide. Lovely. All these pieces are going together beautifully. Like I said at the start, if you've 
if your only experience of snap fit or push fit kits are things like Revell and other cheaper brands and you've had a bad experience like yeah they're always crap and rubbish detail and they always look terrible and they're just low part counter for kids forget all that pretend that never happened if you've never made a bandai kit treat yourself to a bandai kit trust me trust me it will blow your little tiny dinosaur mind because basically bandai are the masters of push fit kits they've been doing it for 40 years they know their beans nobody even comes close to bandai Our masters of the genre k41 is this one now I'm, I, I am gluing all this remember but i don't have to actually glue any of these none of these would have to be glued at all they would all quite happily stay in place once assembled i'm just being careful because of course i've got to ship these to the guys that you model so i've got to survive the rough and tumble of being posted uh. mm, 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 mm. Mm, 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 mm. Chris says you never see fox in any time in the morning he means me not foxes He's having a dig at me. Let's see what chat's doing. Red rocket, red rocket. I don't. I've lost the thread now. In there somewhere. Right, these last two pieces. Q6 and also Q2. So we'll do Q6 first because it's the bridgey piece that goes over here. Uh, which goes that way. I think yes yes if I can coordinate my actual you know big chunky man hands to work properly it's getting really warm in here now oops There we go, just lining it up properly was the key. Bandai kits, for the most part, Bandai is like Lego. Oh, look at that, like the, the jaunty angle it's got there. Uh, Bandai assembly is a bit like Lego assembly. If something's not working, if it doesn't fit properly, if you're having a fit issue, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's your fault. It's something you're doing wrong or something you haven't fitted in advance or something like that. Like Lego. If, if, if you suddenly find a Lego thing doesn't work or doesn't fit, it's probably because you've messed up somewhere along the line. It's always the way. It's never Lego's fault. It's very rarely Bandai's fault. Some of the older kits are a bit shonky, but, you know, modern day stuff. No. It's getting hot in here. He's going to take off all his clothes. No. Can't take off what I'm not wearing. <gasps> Joking. that glued in again i don't need to glue any of these but i am just for safety beep, 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 beep. Uh, beef care i don't know what's going on in the conversation there it's all lost me lost to me completely uh, right so that's all those steps pen of writing and we shall blah blah done those that's a reference picture done that one done that one just double checking it's also a way of double checking i've done all the steps basically don't just flip to the next page and carry on because you never know when you might have missed something. That concludes these two doohickeys here. Look at that. Look at the detail on that is fantabulosity. Look at the muscularity. It's, oh, it's gorgeous. There is nowhere that level of detail on the um, fine mold kit. I don't remember these bridgy bits on that kit at all. So I'm seeing detail here that I just wasn't even visible on the Fire Mods version. 
Wow, Bandai are just gods. They are just living gods. Put those over there. Uh, next step, what are we on? Four o'clock. Fantabulosity. This is like when Chris tries to read the chat. Well, no, because Chris just doesn't read the chat well, because Chris starts at the bottom and doesn't go up. Whereas I just don't understand what people are talking about. Chris says, hey, I resent that. I think I've forgotten what. Uh, right, so now we need, let's have a look. We need uh, G and H. That's Q. That's H. H. G, there's G. I can see G. Whoa, I can see a big P. Look at that. Oh, oh. oh. Now I'm quite surprised that all these little pipes and tubes are all pre-molded in. If I was, I would have been. I'm surprised they haven't given you like an extra sprue with 500 little tiny components for this. But I guess they have to do something to keep the cost down. And uh, but if anything was a candidate for greblification, all these little bits here, I'm surprised they're not. They're not individual pipes and tubes. Pipes. Awesome. Look at that. It's just, just fantabulosity. Right. We need. Uh, let's get the G parts off first. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm just every every time I see a pile of greebles, it's just like an eye orgasm every time. Right, I need G10. We start using words like orgasm in an e-model sh show. Da, 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 da. E10 or G10 even. Uh, G2 and three. Two and two. I'm going to mark these so I know which is which. That's three. That's three. This one is two. Two. That's two. That's three. If you haven't realised, by the way, of course, it is very important when you make a model that you make all kind of funny little noises and beat boxes and stuff it's very important to the construction and building process it, it just enhances the entire experience trust me on this beatboxing little bits of beatboxing it's very very important uh g4 which is this one we're doing the bottom area we were working on the bottom area so we need to go uh, i'll leave a little bit of sprue on these because i don't know how much i need to leave so as caution I'll leave a little bit of sprue. I don't want to gouge anything that's not public facing. They might all be invisible bits, but I don't know for sure. So I'll play it safe. Four. Uh, G11. Uh, which is this bit here. Huh? Wow, I just fell off. G11. Put the lid on my glue. Uh, so 10, 4, 3, 2, 11, and 3, 2, 11. some H pieces now. H piece! Uh, I've just cut my grass too! What way? I like skipping back a few seconds sometimes and replaying it two times the speed. The sounds Fox makes it Fox make it two times is dead funny. I do I've done that sometimes when I'm scrubbing through video to edit it, and I do like some. You won't see things like, for example, uh, when I'm setting up shots or when I'm just like I'm doing something that I know I'm going to take the sound out of. Like I'll say, I'll just I'll, I'll say I'm doing a video and I'm like I'll, I'll carry on working on this, and when we come back, I'll show you the next step, and then I'll just have like twenty or thirty seconds of me doing something, and I'll just turn the sound. I'll stop. I'll stop the audio at that point and I'll overdub it. But I'll sit there like doo -doo 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 and I'll make little beatbox noises just to amuse myself for 20 seconds while I'm working and filming. And sometimes, yeah, it's quite funny <coughs> when I scrub through those and these little tiny little noises all sped up. It's quite adorable sometimes. Uh, I just cut my grass too, says Chris. I don't know who said else they said they cut the grass. Hi, Lynn. Lynn's in. Lynn from the US. Hey, Lynn. Uh, how do you all, oh I see, how do you all just finish mowing my lawn? I'm glad it's small, I hope everyone is well. It's 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees centigrade hot. 25 degrees, that's not that warm. 25 degrees is a, a average. You're in New Mexico, you should consider 25 degrees like winter, surely. I don't know. Uh, about the same temperature here, Lynn. 
bit less humid in uh, New Mexico there. Yeah, I think, well, I don't know what the temperature is now, but I'm probably going to guess it's pushing, getting towards about 22, 23. It's getting really warm in here. I think once this stream is finished, I might just close all the windows and curtains and go and sit outside for the rest of the day, to be honest. Or sit downstairs where it's cooler. Chris says, I've just cut my grass. And Paul says, I need to cut my grass. If I'd known you were doing yours, Chris, I'd have let you carry on and do mine as well. And Chris says, my extension lead is not long enough. Graham's got 31 degrees. Blimey, where are you, Graham? Uh, Paul says, you make those beatbox noises. I don't know why I do a little beat. I just do. I've always done little beatbox noises. Uh, H-spray. I need H-spray. H! Uh, we need H9. H9. Hello, Mama Fox. Hello. Wow, she went all deep and throaty then. Hello. <laughs> uh, H9. Which looks to me like another bit of a panther tank. Quite possibly. H9, H with an H, and also we need H13. Oh, look at this half, there's a half an engine, half an engine block, again, the other half. Uh, what does it say, H13, H, H13, H13, there it is. A little square bit of goodness, a little bit of checker plate with something on it. Oh, pink, it's going to come off anyway. There we go. Uh, that can go in the middle. That's a green, but that's a bit of sprue. Lovely. That can go over there. Clean up time. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, Lynn says, well, I've had heat stroke twice and heat exhaustion twice. So when it gets to 70 degrees, 21 degrees, it's too hot for me. Yeah. If that's the case, then yeah, stay out the heat. Also, we have to give her extreme gratitude that you use, that you give us both the uh, nonsense American temperature and also the proper centigrade temperature that normal people use. We appreciate this, that you're doing normal temperature as well as nonsense American stuff. Because, you know, it's nonsense, isn't it? Buh, 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 buh. If you tell me it's 100 degrees, I'm like, what, you mean like water's just boiling? I'd be dead. The skin would be coming off my body. So we do appreciate the fact that you're converting it into proper temperatures for us. It's most thoughtful of you. Thank you very much. Chris says it's 27 here at the moment, apparently. It might be warmer, I don't know. I just, I, I'm not able to guess the temperature by, you know, just how much I'm sweating, but it could be hotter. I don't know yet. Uh, look at, I, oh, oh, this is just divine. Looking at these, oh, I'm gonna have to zoom in and show you in a little bit. And I'm already zoomed in, apparently. I forgot, I didn't even know I was zoomed in. Let me hold this up for you, and we'll do a bit of focusy focusing. We'll do a guided tour again, right? This one got a focus because I'm moving it around. But we have some kind of truck chassis or vehicle, could be a Jeep. There's the engine block, there's the drive shaft. Here's the actual frame of the chassis. Oh, it could be. Okay, could be a combination of two, because there's also a bit of an engine block space down here as well. However, not only that, do we have like a chassis, we also have, uh, what else have we got? Let's have a look and see. We have, uh, let me have a look, I'm just trying to see what I can see. Some panels and bits, but the two things I can see straight away are, I don't know if you'll see them, half a jerry can. Half a jerry can. That is a Tamiya jerry can with the straps around it. They come in halves. You put them both halves together. That is two halves of a Tamiya jerry can. There and there. Alongside this truck chassis, which I guess is a truck of some sort. Yeah, there's an engine block there, but there's also... That could be the back, I suppose. They put some other bits in there. There's the transmission. Oh, that is fantastic. Bandai, I think I'm in love. I still want to marry Bandai and have all these babies. That is just... Beautiful. Be oh, sorry, off camera. That is just beauty. That is, that is absolute beauty. Right, focus time. Hang on. Uh, where's my focus tool? Right, there we go. If I could get both my webcams to work at once, I could have like a close up on the desk one where you could use 
use it to show you things close up, but never mind. Uh, Edward Lennon says, Fox must be mad at me. He never says hello anymore. No, I, I'll tell you why. I've got this thing on. And that means I can't actually see anything in chat when I'm working. Until you put it in capitals and I saw it. So it's not that it's not that I'm ignoring you. I'm actually doing some work and uh, everything on the screen is a blur other than things in capitals. When I've got my visor of seeing on. So not ignoring you, Edward. I couldn't be mad at you. There's no reason to be mad at you. You've done nothing to make me mad. Model Maker Mayhem says belt. I don't know why. All the neighbours are cracking out the paddling pool, says Ian Thompson. Uh, Candy Graham says agree. It's insane that the US has not gone to the metric system. They like their bushels and their cups. What can you say? <laughs> It's like we said before, though, I mean, you know, we're metric over here, but I couldn't tell you how far. I have no concept of how long a kilometre is. I still think of distance in miles and height in feet. If you tell me how tall is someone, I'll say he's five foot six. Because although we're metric and I'm decibel and I'll do, you know, everything I do is metric centimetres. If I'm measuring something, it's millimetres and centimetres. I have no idea how big one and three eighths inches is. Um. But if you say, how tall is this man? I'll say five foot six. I don't know how tall 1.7 meters is. I've even seen people use give people heights in in millimeters. I'm like, what? Centimeters? What? Uh, weights? Yeah, I know how big a kilogram is. It's weird. We're kind of metric over here, but we kind of embrace. If you say, if I say it's 20, it, it's 30 miles to eat to drive three models. I know roughly that's about an hour drive, an hour and a half drive for me on the motorway. Maybe an hour drive, depending on traffic. Uh, but if you say it's so many kilometres, I'm like, is is that a long way? I no idea. No idea how. In my mind, I can't visualise how long a kilometre is. So, yes, it's weird. But I was watching. A, I was watching a video lately. Uh, what was I watching? There's a video, famous video, well it's not a famous video, it's a video explaining how to do some conversions on a particular model. I won't mention channel names and stuff, but there's a video and it's saying, here's how to do this conversion work on this model. And if you know who it is, please don't put it in chat. Um, anyway, so yes, yeah, perfectly good channel, nice guy, good content. I'm like, oh yeah, I want to know how to how to mod this model. So let's, let's have a watch. And he says, right, you need to put these bits and things here, add some plastic card here. And he says, this is... It's about one and three eighths of an inch, and this is about one and six twelfth sixteenths, and so and I'm like, what? What the hell is one and twelve six seven thirty twoths of a what? I was like, I have no concept of how to measure those distances. What the? And I'm like, why would you say it's one and three sixteenths of an inch when you could just say it's two and a half centimeters? I don't know, or whatever it is, I don't know. And it just seems so clunky. Of a way to measure, it's like one, and he's you know, you can see him trying to look at these tiny little lines on the measuring tool, and he's like, it's one and seventeen twenty fourths of a of a, and I'm like, how many quatloos is that? Whereas I'd be like, yeah, it's about one one point one point two centimeters and one point one centimeter. There you go, done. I don't know, overcomplicated measurements. Right. That's the back of a tank. I'm not going to hold it up, but that's the back of a tank again, stuck on some other bits and bobs. Sweet coffee. No, I like Chris's bushels and cups. Who? Uh... Uh, Britain has been going metric inch by inch for 40 years. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I prioritise meat over sugar, says Team Inept. Absolutely. Absolutely. Although, because I'm old now, my teeth are rubbish. Um, I've I've discovered over the years that my teeth have got more and more sensitive as I got older, to the point now where I can't really eat sugary things. I can't eat sweets. I can't eat. I can no longer have sugar in my coffee because it kills my teeth. So my diet is pretty much savoury now. I mean, sometimes if I if I have something sugary or sweet, I can if I brush my teeth straight away, it can kind of get away with it, but. 
yeah it just gives me grief in the long run so my diet is pretty much savory only now so from now on i of course myself also prioritized meat over sugar i mean i did anyway but even like you know sweets and things chocolate kind of have to not bother nowadays it's kind of sad or very occasionally not do it you know gone are the days when i could wolf sit there sometimes you know there were times where maybe i'd have our day at work and i'd come home and i'd be like you know what i'm gonna sit in front of the computer i'm gonna load up my playlist of all the bill episodes ever i'm gonna get like line up a couple of bottles of beer and a whole mess of chocolate and crisps and just blomp out in front of the pc watching that and just be beer and chocolate and crisps for the whole evening because everything's rubbish and i can't be bothered yeah those were the days can't do that anymore you know when you've had like a bad day and you're like i'm just going to sit in front of the tv and veg and nothing is going to get past anything i'm just it's chocolate and beer and don't care bad food and everything yeah those days are gone now it's like I can just, I'll just binge on chocolate. Oh, wait, no, because it'll hurt my teeth and my teeth will be in agony for a, a day or two. Okay, I'll binge on crisps. No, because then you'll get too much salt on your face and your lips crack. And if I eat loads and loads of crisps, I used to binge on crisps sometimes. If I eat like loads of packs of crisps in all, like in a short time, my lips just dry out and go cracking horrible. And that's quite painful. So I'm like, oh, God. Damn it. You're taking away all the nice things from my diet. The enjoyable comfort foods. This is not fair. No, I don't know. Uh, Fox, are you saying not to send you any more fudge then? I always make an exception for fudge. There is that. I always make an exception for fudge. Fudge is the one exception. Because, you know, you may take our land. You may take our people, but you will never take my fudge. I don't know what the quote actually is, so I'm making a mess of that. You may take my land, Jamesy. You may take my freedom, but you will never take my fudge. I'll, I'll stop doing that now. Doodle, doodle, doodle. However bad the accent was, it wasn't as bad as Mel Gibson's accent. Let's just be perfectly honest about it. It's a dark time in his career, and we'll just leave it at that. Question: Why are all the bad things, are good things in life, bad for you? Because yeah. Because it's the way it is. Because the universe really gets off on Schadenfreude, I think. Hugs are good, and they're not bad for you. Says any team inept. Uh, says uh, yeah. Says Twain. Hugs are good. Hugs are great, but you know sometimes they can be illegal. And right now they can be really bad for you. Nippertron. Nippertron. Get off, get off, get off the sprue. Hey, where did that go? Oh, I'm going to stand on that at some point with my bare foot and I'll be in agony. Oh, no. Oh, it's a bit. I thought I found a piece there. It's not, it's a sprue. It's a piece of sprue. I thought I found a tube, a pipe. Uh, everything in good in life makes you fat, poor, or sick, says Dave Cardboard. It is, in fact, true. Can I see any recognisable parts on here? Just generic tubes and plating and grills. Nothing standing out massively. Bits of tank parts, I can see. Nothing standing out massively on that. Ugh. Nom, 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 nom. Oh. Cracked ribs, anyone, says Ian Thompson. Wait, what? Mm. Ribs. Mm. Sarah Jane's in. Hi, Fox and everyone. Hi, Sarah Jane. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are falconing -ing 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 -ing. Today, I have done many things. So far, many things. I should do many more. Uh, I think what we'll do, get this bit done. See, see how much we've got left to do. I mean, we've got a lot left. I mean, see if we want to do any more today or leave it there for a bit. I don't know yet. Uh, right, so. 
what we have here is this piece here, isn't it? We have this little piece here. And then H9, which is this one here, needs to go into this little receptacle. Somehow it, this little lip tab thing goes into yon little orifice of attachmentations. Somehow. I said, oh, I said, very nice. Oh, very nice. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I got all oh, like a glove. Like a glove. Very nice. Fine Mods Falcon, that's just one single piece, I think. I think you might just plonk that whole piece on like that, but that's what molded in. Do, do, do. I can confirm this is a more detailed kit than the Fine Mods Falcon. I've built enough of them over the years to know. I would show you the only one. I, ha I have one left in the house. The rest were all commissions. I have one left, but it was the first one I ever did. The paint job is garbage, and I daren't show it to you. Also, it's covered in like about three inches of dust. So, yeah, you won't see that one anytime soon. Also, I glued a bit on backwards as well. <laughs> is that a tank turret part, says Model Making Mayhem? No, that is the back of a panther. Again, cut up. You'll see in lots of places the whole configuration where you've got two sort of fan things like extractor fan units and then grills on either side that's the back of the I think the panther if someone can correct me in, in the chat i think that's the back of the panther and they just cut the back plate off the tank and just stuck it all over the falcon there's all over the different places and they're all different sizes so some of them are obviously the 135th kit some of them might be a 172nd kit that they used uh, but you see it all over and we'll see more of it when we do the uh, the back hull plate g10 is that way around goes on here like this you see Ooh, okay. oh it just goes together so oh oh it's just, oh, so satisfying that is so satisfying everything goes into place thank you very much like and subscribe i can't tell you i just can't tell you how satisfying some of these things are so satisfying uh, is that a tank to part? No, he's just pleased to see us. <laughs> says Paul. Dust, you mean naturally accrued like weathering powder? No, I mean literally dust and five years of fag smoke from when we used to smoke in this house. We don't smoke in this house anymore. We're all clean now. None of us smoke anymore. For, since a few years ago. But they used to be smoking in this house. It's probably got like an inch of gunk on it from smokage. Uh, that was the right around, wasn't it? Yes. That was just... Oh, that went on so well. Now, we need to do uh, G2 and 3. That's 3. That's why I mark them, you see. It's good to mark. It's good to mark. G2 goes here. See these ribs? Them slots. Or rather, these ribs, them slots. You, you know what I mean. That goes on there like that. Like that, you see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's lo oh, that's lovely. Oh, look at that. If you didn't know that was a separate part, you wouldn't know because there's just no gap apart from that gap. There's no gap that I can. There's no discernible. Bandai, stop making a layer at me. There we go. I'm going to glue that in so it's permanently in. Wait, is that right? It doesn't seem to. I've not put it. No, if it's not working, it means I've messed it up somewhere. What have I left on? Have I left a bit of sprue or something? Uh, oh, I've done it the wrong way around. This way around. That way. There. Yes, it was me. It was me all along. I admit it. I think it was me. Was it me? It could have been me. It might not have been me. It was probably me. Was it me? Yes, it was me. Was it me? I don't know. That. You remember that minute ago when I said these things go together perfectly and now it's... There we go. There. 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 Oh, yes. Just these little... Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. Oh, that's never going to come off ever. I don't even need to glue that. That's never going to come off ever, ever again. That is beautiful. 
This whole build is just a model making trouser tent from start to finish. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, look at that. It's lovely, lovely, lovely. Now you do get a bit of a gap there, but again, that is underneath. And there might be something that covers most of that up anyway when it goes into the hole. And it could just be interpreted as a panel liner anyway. So I'm not bothered about that. That was just, that was just, oh, that was nice. That was right. G11 needs to be on here. Uh, we need to have it that way. And this goes yep, that way. And this is just a slot rotated into the relevant hole. Oh, oh, lovely. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's nice. A little bit of a gap there. That's nice. There is a little clearance there, but it's uniform all the way along, so it's more than likely just kind of intended as a, a slight panel gap rather than an actual mould gap or seam gap. So that's the thing, with when you've got like gaps in pieces and stuff, sometimes you want to clear them up and clear them away. But sometimes they just look like a panel line, like an actual panel gap on a, a real panel. And you, you think, you know what, it's fine. So I'm not going to do anything with that because it's such a tiny, tiny gap. It just looks like a piece of paddling. Plus also, you're not going to see under there anyway. That one, lovely Lee, lovely Lee. That was lovely, that was. But I'm going to glue that bit maybe because that's not a secure oh, I, that would be all right actually I might glue that one on just to be safe because that one isn't quite as secure as the others <laughs> little touch down there Whoop. just to lock it in place there you go lovely fuel the Quality. Lovely. Beautiful. Uh, I want to start my perfect grey falcon. I have to get the better learn airbrushing, says Lynn. Yeah, don't don't rush it. If you're getting one. You can build it. But don't paint it till you're ready to paint it. And you know you're ready to paint it. Because it as you'll see, hopefully, if this all works out as I plan it, you can build most of it anyway, already. I plan to have, by the end of it, you wait at the start, my plan is I'll have um, the upper hole, the lower hole, the cockpit tube, and a couple of bits, like the you know the, the, the upper and lower turrets and the, raid, the rectenna dish. A couple of little bits loose, and that's it. Painting all at once. Uh, so that is there. Yep, those little gaps are absolutely fine as panel lines, not things that need to be filled, so that's absolutely acceptable. Uh, H3 needs to go... That's a hole for the for the LED. We won't be having the landing gear anyway. H3 needs to go there. Like that. Perfect. Uh, I think, yes, yes. No, I don't think that will ever need to come off. Let me just double check. When you put the landing gear on, or rather the landing gear covers. I don't think you actually need to do that bit because, yes, I can do this like a little bit on. I was just double checking that, um, I didn't glue this bit on and then suddenly find if I want to put the landing gear cover on I need to not have it glued in place but then I remembered uh, when this thing goes on the display stand there is actually no landing gear cover for this particular landing gear bay there is no closed bay because this is a bit where the actual display base goes into that I think from what I've understood so that you get covers for the other parts but for this bit there's no that's where the stand sits in there so that's kind of cool uh, 
now. <laughs> Folks, Bandai's QA team must either be half blind by now or the checks are automated somehow. Yeah. The Japanese, that's just all you need to worry about. Uh, Paul DiTomaso, I can't afford a perfect grey falcon. Get yourself the 1144 scale. It's just as delightful. It's a lot smaller, obviously. It's like that big. But it's kind of, kind of, not equally as detailed, but it's still got ridiculous levels of detail on it. And it's still a lovely little falcon. Get yourself the, the, the 1144 scale Bandai one. Much, obviously it's not massively expensive, but it's, it's smaller, but it is just as much fun. The quality control is next level. The quality control is level Japan. Model making mayhem. My head hurts after this laptop nonsense. I think you're going to work laptop and it sucks. Have you not got a games console? Can you not watch YouTube through a games console on the telly, on the big telly? Because, you know, Mama Fox watches the Monday night show on her Xbox. Ian says, I better start saving for a macro lens for my camera to capture all the eye candy on my build. Oh, it, it really is just, I mean, this is just a massive box full of model making trouser tent. It, it just it is everything on this so far. Now, I'm not saying that as we get through the build, I might find something that's completely, oh dear, well, look at that. I've not finished it yet. I've not built this before. So it might be that later on, I'm like, oh dear Lord, what's that? But so far, the it's just the, the, the epitome of absolute quality. I've never seen such wonderful detail on a model kit. It's beautiful. Fox, I'm watching you on my 50-inch smart TV, says Model Maker Mayhem. Yes. Wait, well, if you're watching me on the 50-inch smart TV, why are you on a laptop for the chat? I suppose there is that. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. Yes, Paul, it's not not a cheap kit. And uh, it's nice if you can afford it, but if you can't afford it, obviously, and, you, you know, it's not something you can save for, then have a look at the 144 scale instead. Or, if you just want to have fun with the painting, like I said at the start of the stream, you weren't here, you know, if this is well beyond your budget anyway, the, the majority of this, of the Falcon fun, is painting. So even if it means, you know, you want to go and get the... The, the Revell 20 quid one or something like that. The, the little cheapy, cheapy Revell one or something. They're still fun to paint. They're not, not the best kit in the world, but you can still have fun with it. You can still have fun with the painting. And the painting's where the fun's at. I need to clean some schmutz off my glasses. Oh. Uh, glasses schmutz. I can't see the chat for a minute while I've got my glasses off. Oh, I can't see anything. Oh, they spilled coffee on it. Oh. There we go. Paul says, I do have the 1144th Falcon. Oh, cool. There you go. Done. Get it done. Uh, working at home, Fox chat on the phone. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, I see. You're just working on your laptop. Oh, dear Lord. Do, 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 do. Fox, I got you on my 42 inch telly and chatting on the laptop. Yeah. Yeah, Mama Fox doesn't join the chat because she's on the big telly downstairs when she watches the Monday night show. Right, I think we're going to do, well, it's coming up to half four. What have we done so far today? We've not done a lot. Well, we've done a lot, but we've not done a lot. <clears throat> it is a slow build. I am taking my time with this because I'm enjoying the building process. We have, of course, installated the engine blockage. Yeah, you see a little engine blocks that was pre primed. So we've done that. How after focus is that? Yes. It's like a 1980s news stab introduction graphic, isn't it? It's terrible. I know what I mean. You don't know what I mean. I know what I mean. So that's been installed in there. Put them bits in. Uh, and we've done these two uh, maintenance pits, which are beautiful. And I've built the thing there. So we're up to. Blade away. We have come all the way up to here and we've done. Oh, no, I'm not done. One last step we haven't done yet. Oh, I've got. Oh, I need N1. Wait there, wait there. Don't go anywhere. Stop. 
Stay where you are. N1. Where's M1? M1. Not the not the scandalised energy company. Oh. I totally forgot that step because I'd, I'd skip past it to do the bits. N1. That is N1, isn't it? I'll just double check because I know it's the biggest piece in the world, but I'm going to guess it's N1. N1. Yes. Oh, well, let's get this off. Let's get it off. Before we go anywhere. I'm seeing on this hole something that I've never seen on a Falcon before, which is a good another good thing of Bandai's quality. Uh, which is yep, uh, that nub that I obviously didn't see before. They've actually included detail under the lip of the upper hole or the lower hole, little bits here, which on most Falcon kits you don't get anything on this, it's just flat. But they've included little ticks and little bits of greebling, which look like, to me, very, very tiny tank tracks. They're probably, in real life, probably 170 second scale tank track pieces. Perfect. Right, let's clean that off. Bring these back. We're not finished yet. I was ahead of myself. I do apologise. Uh, right, so let's get these nubs removed. Nubulations. Plink. Mm -hmm. uh, nub 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 nub. Sound like an Ewok. Move. Get that off. One little bit here. Why am I putting them there when I've got Fox? You're an idiot. Oh, God damn it. It's because I'm it's because I'm just so excited about building this thing. It's. I have to tell you, I've always said, come back, I've always said I'm a, I'm a painter, not a builder, and I don't enjoy the build process, unless it's something like this. This is why I love the Bandai kit so much, because as somebody who hates the build process, they make the build process actually enjoyable and fun and not a nightmare, which it is for me. I don't enjoy building at all. Uh, right now, those knobs are in a place and the place that those nubs are is there there's one is that a nub yeah it's a little tiny nub now you're not going to see any of this because it's going to be all off camera because it's a big piece to try and denub so i do apologize um a bit we've done that one piece on the end here i know you're not seeing this sorry about that Now I can be fairly generous with these and just scrape these off because it's nice flat pieces. So if I'm just scraping the nub off, I don't need to worry about sanding it back later because I can I can scrape it off quite nicely and keep it flat, which is excellent. And some of them just aren't visible anyway. Some of them are hidden under other components, so And I can do a final pass for denubbing once everything's assembled, which is nice. Because it won't all be painted. So I'm going to a bit slapdash getting these nubs off. But that's fine. Oops, knocking the camera, sorry. Because that's where that middle centre part's going to go. So uh, I think that's all the nubulations. Nubulations! Look at the nubularity! Right. Now, what we need to do now is we need to, I may have to move the camera out a bit, actually. Should we, should we do this? Because we've got to, yeah. I'm going to move the camera back a bit. Because we need to bring in this bad boy and the other bad boy. I need to do the focus. Give me a moment. Uh, where's, where's the, fo oh, where's the, oh. I'd say give me a shout when it's in focus, but there's a 30 second delay because YouTube, that'll have to do. I hope that's in focus for you because it's the best I can get. Right. Now, let us do some quick little assemblations. So we need to have this bit here. Yep. 
and this bit here. Put my knife away. Beep. Serious question. Uh, Patrick Stucheski says, do you use umpton oils? Uh, you asked that last night. And I, uh, I don't know if anybody in chat who wasn't here last night, but I've never heard of them. So if anybody in chat... Hi, Falk. Hi, Patrick. If anybody in chat knows about um umpton oils, who wasn't watching the E-Model show last night, uh, do say. Uh, serious question. Would it be possible to send old sprues back to a manufacturer for recycling? Thought just pinged into my head. Um... I seem to remember that was a thing with Bandai at one point. Somebody did do that, but I think most don't because that means they've got to spend money. Whereas you could just put them into your own recycling uh, as normal. It would. I don't think they really want to spend the money dealing with that, to be honest. <laughs> right, so we have two pieces. Let's put that there. We have these two bits. Remember we made these, so uh, we need to do uh, 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 that one on this side. I've got the little pointy arrows, little bunny ears. The bunny ear says, you can't see it because it's overexposed. Uh, the little one should be on the right hand side. So little one on the right hand side is there. <whistles> Left hand side <whistles> goes there. So we need to insertilate these into the obstreperation holes because uh, it says do these two bits first. Also numbers than one, one and two. So one is do that. Two is put this on. So we'll do what it tells us. Flip you. I'm going to do what you tell me. Right. right so this needs to go onto here. So it's going to be lots of pegs and holes. Hopefully it goes in like a dream. Hopefully. Slots, keys, there's keys and slots at the back that need to line up to those holes there. That sits on there. That goes into there. <gasps> oh, that's so nice. Oh, that was delightful. Little creaky noises which Trevor said, darling. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. Is that a little overexposed? Let me drop the, let me drop the gamma down a bit again. Can you see a bit better now? Now I'm further away. Oh, oh, oh. Now, I could just glue this in right now, but I don't know if there's anything else to... Let's just get the other piece on first. This one needs to go here. Seems to be if you slot these end pieces in first, to their little crenellations, and that guides the rest of it for you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, oh, oh. I've gone a bit moist. Oh, this is the best thing ever. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's oh. magical happen. Oh, no, it's not quite fully in. Hang on. More pushing. Does it need more pushing? Is it in all the way? Hang on one second. Yeah, more pushing. I think that's in all the way. As far as it wants to go. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yes. Yes. Outstanding. I think that's in all the way. I think Fox needs some alone time. Yeah. That's going to be a big build. Said somebody somewhere. I just saw it. Who said that? Uh, Ian Thompson, it's going to be a big build. Yes, it does seem bigger than the Fire Mold's 172nd Falcon, so it's weird. Uh, I'm assuming I can glue them in now. They don't have to come out again for any reason. I don't think... Oh, it get, they get covered up anyway. Okay, that's fine. So this now goes on to here like... Why am I talking like Kirk? This now goes on to here like... Oh, 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 that's, oh, 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 God, that was amazing. Oh. Time to roll over and light a fag. Oh, oh, God, that was, oh, that was just so, oh, that went on so nicely. Oh, the creakiness. Oh, it's so nice. 
they're never coming out. That's fine. That's not, oh. Now there's big gaps there, but don't panic because there's armor to go over that bit. This has not even got the thing on it yet. So don't worry about that. Oh, you beauty. Oh. Oh. New pants, please. That is just. That's just yeah. Yeah, you get a big gap here. And there, but you've got the plating that goes over this bit, which I assume will cover that up. Because it's going to sit in the gap where those panels stop. Oh, moist. Hang on. Moist. Oh, that's amazing. That was just oh. Yeah. So look at that. Fantabulous. I think we can leave it there now. It does say to put this on, but, uh, oh no, I can't do. It does also mention about wiring, but all it's saying is to put the LED for the landing gear lights there. I'm not having landing gear, so that light will not be needed. So, what I can do is I can put this on. I think I can put this on. Can I put this on, Dad? Can I put it on? I'll put it on now. It's too late. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's on there forever now. Never coming off. Not ever, never, never, never. And I've made, if you know your Star Trek DS9, it's a fat defiant. Yeah, it's a fat defiant. <laughs> it's like the fat Labrador of the defiant world. Oh, that's great. It's a fat defiant, isn't it? Tough little ship. Quantum torpedoes. Oh, so much happiness. Get that. Now you get the idea. Sarah Jane says, I use cut down lengths of sprue for paint stirring. I like that. Smart idea, Sarah Jane, says Lynn. And it is a smart idea. Sorry, I had caps on. I wonder if the quad laser cannon turrets are turnable. No, they... You can see there's three pegs there. They're just on, I think. They're not like the fire molds one you can rotate around. These are just on. <coughs> Uh, Patrick Chachewski says, I want to buy some alkaline two paints because they are good for metal textures. They're really nice for metal textures. They are lacquers though, so you need to make sure you've got a proper spray booth and a proper respirator, not just a mask, if a respirator and proper extraction. If you share the house with other people and children and animals, make sure your room can be closed off and ventilated well and have an extraction system. Um, but yeah, they are really good, the lacquer paints. They're really nice. Uh, make sure your airbrush is solvent safe. Because if you use lacquer paints, you need to use lacquer thinners and alcohols to clean them. Uh, and if I put lacquers through this airbrush, for example, it'd probably strip it off inside and kill the seals. So, yeah, make sure your airbrush is solvent safe. <sighs> I thought this was a family show, the noises you're making. Whoa. Uh, do, 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 do. I doubt the manufacturer would go through with it, though. Good recycling should deal with the problem. There's some sprue glue, too. Yeah, no, I mean model manufacturers they're not going to spend money to recycle your trash because you'd have to pay to send it to them and they'd have to pay to recycle it when at the end of the day for most people it gets recycled anyway and you put it in the in the recycling so or you know use it yourself use it to make sprue goo uh, or to make other things oh yes oh so nice yeah i don't think manufacturers would spend i know that bandai do have a series of models that are made of recycled sprue plastic. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but they are specifically made with recycled plastic, and they've they've, they've got a specific name, and they're like they may not be actually available outside of Japan. Um, but I think most companies have a hard enough time selling their models and making a profit than actually paying to do your recycling as well. Nice idea, but nobody wants to do it. <sighs> Doodle 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 doodle. I thought that said tummy turret. That's something else entirely. What on? Should I Google that? No. Uh, Ian Thompson says, I recommend getting your hands on some C1 metalizer. I have some here. Depends what metallics you want and what you're painting. I had some. It's now underneath the table. Hang on. Ugh. Fudge. See what metal is it? You might not be able to get it outside the UK. I don't know if E-Models have any in stock. But it's I'm not going to put it on the desk because it contaminates everything. But it's a buffable powder. 
basically you if you want a shiny chrome look you spray your thing gloss black primer first and then you apply seal metalizer powder and buff it uh, that looks quite good if you're spraying lacquers alclad paints are really good uh, you can also try for example the mr metal cut the mr hobby mr metal buffable paints they're also um, buffable uh, but if you want to stick to acrylics uh, go for the that's the wrong it's a rubbish one to use go for the vallejo metal color there's loads of different colors but they're just acrylics they're not they're not lacquers so they're not quite as nasty as lacquers but they're the finest i'm gonna put this back one sec hang on back of my head oh, hey, oh, oh don't fall off no nope. oh. the vallejo metal colors they're acrylics but they are super super fine pigments so they look like lacquers and there's all different metallic colors so if, if painting lacquers is a problem Go for the Vallejo metal colours. They're really nice. <sighs> Paul says that's why incognito mode was invented. Patrick says what's incognito? Oh, it's where you use Chrome and it's like you can browse in secret. Undercover. Ian Thompson says shame, especially considering how well Bandai kits are. Wait, what did I say? Uh, Dave says, I can't say how they compare to Alclad because I've never used them, but I like AK's Extreme 2 metals. They're pretty robust and quite easy to use. Airbrush only, though. You can't brush them. I want to use Alclad 2 for World War One engines. Um, yeah, you can do. I mean, Alclad's advantage is they're, they're for more designed. Their advantage is to create more shiny, shiny metals like chromes and aluminiums and things for like aircraft bodies and things like that um that's where they excel if you're doing world war one vehicles uh, if they're meant to be shiny things like vehicles and aircraft and stuff uh then yeah they'll be fine they'll have that nice aluminium or chrome or steel look but like i say if 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 it's going to be weathered and dirty then you could just go for the Vallejo true metals let me see if i can find a clean one for you because that was filthy that but hang on let me find the proper one for you. There we go. That's a bit better. Vallejo metal colours. They've got. Let's have a look. If you if you're not sure about spray, spraying lacquers, then don't spray lacquers. Go for acrylics. Most acrylic metals are terrible. But these are really fine. You won't see any grain. We've got burnt iron. We've got duraluminium. Uh, pale burnt metal, jet exhaust, won't need that for World War One. gunmetal grey, uh, exhaust manifold, hello exhaust manifold, uh, steel, uh, I think that's all the ones I've got, yeah that's all the ones I've got, I've opened this tin of paints now and all I can smell, all I can smell from this entire tin of paints is uh, Where's it gone? This one. I think it's... No, it's not that one. It is. I, I, can't, I know what it is and I can't find it. I think it's... Yes. Ultramarine blue. All I can smell is this because it smells like lavender. It's really weird. I think it's that one. It's a whole thing full of paint and all I can smell is lavender. <laughs> but yeah, if you... If you want nice metallics, but lacquers are a problem, because they're lacquers, Vallejo, Vallejo Metal Colour. I know it's not in focus, but Vallejo Metal Colour. They're just acrylics, but they are not like normal acrylics. If you spray an acrylic metallic, it's normally grainy and horrible. These are like, like they look like lacquers, trust me. Trust me. If you want proper shiny chromes though, then yeah, go for your Alclads. But if you, ha if you want just to look like... If I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure World War One aircraft and things had not particularly shiny chrome parts. So if you want just things like aluminium and iron and steel, then yeah, go for the but yeah. <sighs> Show more Ab Tai Lung 502 oils, please. Uh, hang on. Uh, it's not going to be pretty because they're all squished. Hang on, let me move this out of the way. <sighs> move down a bit focus tool where's my focus tool hang on a minute 
it's focus. There it is. That's not focus. Near enough. Uh, I have. Let's have a look and see what we've got. I've got all kinds of oils. But I have. Let's get them all out, shall we? All the oils in the world. Yes. Hang on. There's more. There's more. Yes. Wish we could just get all the oils up and start picking them out and trying which is which. What do we have? I don't have millions of them, but I have. Of course, I've got an entire drawer of Starship Phil, which isn't here. Uh, I've got some Abtalung 502 Black. Uh, we've got German Grey Highlight, again 502 Abtalung. German Grey Highlight, we have Basic Flesh Tone. Uh, we have Coagulated Blood, it's a nice sort of bluey, purpley red colour. Uh, light Flesh Tone, we have Light Rust Brown, you'll see me use that on the Falcon. Dark Rust, you'll see me use that on the Falcon. Uh, flesh Shadow, which is also a nice rust colour. Shadow Brown, which is a nice oily, dirty colour. Olive Green. Uh, copper Oxide Blue. That's a really nice uh, colour for adding. If you've got, say, a, if you've got a model that's dark blue or painted, like, say, even that colour, that colour blue, anything like that, and you want to do streaking effects, but you want to suggest that the paint's faded in some places. What you do is you get a little little tiny dot of copper oxide blue and you just get your brush and put a little dot on it and you just go like that with a little bit of thinners. When I do the streaking on the Falcon, you'll see, but you do that and you get this nice light blue streak and you fade it away. And it works on pretty much any colour, greens, uh, reds. You can even do it on reds and yellows. It just makes a light streak. Uh, for some reason, there's a thing appeared on my... Oh, there we go. Uh, that's quite a nice streaking colour. And I've also got a load of Starship filth. I've also got some um, just artist oils. I've got Windsor & Newton um, Cobalt Blue Hue. I've got some Windsor & Newton uh, Permanent Green Light. Payne's Grey. That's a good uh, modulation colour. Uh, what's this one? Cadmium Orange. This is Roni. I've got Dale & Winton and some Rowney. Uh, what's this one? Jaune de Naples, so Naples yellow, and some uh, mixing white. Uh, I've got some others somewhere, but they're all. I, I had these are all. I had like a massive collection of oil paints when I used to do actual oil painting on canvas and stuff, but they've all got thrown out over the years. These are all really old. half of these probably won't open anymore because they're all old and sealed up. You can see I use the white a lot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. But these these are great for weathering and stuff. You'll probably see me use a fair fair chunk of these i'll probably use the rust colors uh the blue uh maybe a bit of green let's have a look i'll probably use the blue the green uh i've got the starship filth i'll probably use the rust colors you probably see them on the falcon being used for either dot filter or streaking the rest of these probably not really i might use the white for a dry brush yeah, I'll just put these back in drawer. Hang on a second. Oh, wait, wait. Give me a moment. I've got to put them all away again now. Hang on. Hang on. Like I said last night, though, when we were saying talking last night about them, you know, there's nothing wrong with using artist oils. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all. But if you want the real good stuff for model making. You can't go wrong with the 5A Trab Talon just purely because the pigments are so fine. They're perfect. Fat defiant. Uh, right. Where are we? Ian Thompson says, this is why the 502 paints are in short supply. Bear in mind, they're all about six years old, those tubes. Uh, Dave Cole, but I use some Windsor Newton oils for wood grain. I suspect success is more down to technique than the paint, but once it's over the acrylic base colour, dragging it around with stiff hogshead brushes worked well. Yeah, the only difference is that artist paint had to be a lot more oily and a lot more linseedy oily. They use different bases in the, the 502 paints with less emphasis on linseed oils, so they're a bit drier and more opaque. They're more opaque as well. Uh, Abtalon 502 makes pigments, yes. 
right, I think we're up to date. Right, I think what we're going to do is come up to 10 to 5. I will call it there. What's that, four hours? That's not bad. Uh, we'll call it there. I shall um, be cracking on with this, obviously. Now, I don't know what I'll do. I may just crack on and do some more bits and bobs. Uh, or I might just wait till the next show and we'll do another live stream. I am keen to get this done as quickly as possible because I need to get this done and painted and finished because a lot of the things I need to crack on with. So I need to get this done and finished and painted um, soon as. But it's not always possible to do a live stream because other people stream in my own schedules. So we'll either crack on from here at next time or I'll have advanced a little bit and we'll do another live stream because I'll keep streaming the buildy part. As soon as we get to all the build done, I'll then stop the streams and I'll crack on with proper filming the painting process. Um, but we'll leave it there for now, I think. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, of course, to like and subscribe. Uh, hit the like button every time somebody makes a video. Hit the like button to make sure it goes up in the charts. Uh, and subscribe, of course. Hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any videos, that any live streams that I put up or any of us put up. Uh, don't forget, of course, we'll be back next Monday for the eModels live show on this very channel. So take care of yourselves. And don't forget, of course, to pop along to eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. Yes, yes. Anyway, yes, I shall uh, go and sit and look at the Fat Defiant for a bit. And I'll debate whether I should put some more greebles on it. But until next time, I shall say thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. It's <laughs> Melody Volk. Go be awesome. Oh, so nice. Moist. Go be awesome. And until next time, I shall say, adios amoebas. <laughs>